Good afternoon from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm Joe Hunk. The Vols have made a change at head coach as Lady Vols head coach Kelly Harper has officially been fired. After five seasons, she finishes with 108 wins as well as two Sweet 16 appearances. VFL Derek Barnett is re-signing with the Houston Texans. He did not start a single game in 2023 for the Eagles, then got waived. And for Houston, he started Four games, had two and a half sacks, as well as 11 quarterback hits, and one of those two and a half sacks did come against the Titans. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols. The flagship station for you, Tennessee Titans, as well as home to 3HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. Three H L one zero four five. There's own Monday edition. Uh, we got anything to talk about? Is anybody in here straining with the vocal cords? Anybody go to Detroit? Hey man, they try to affect the game. Lord of mercy. Damn Barry White. Lord yeah, of listen mercy. Listen to you. Hey man, I'm. Just, hey listen, My I'm just darling. I'm, I... I'm just happy to be back. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to be happy back in one alive. person. Yeah, I'm happy you're piece. back too. I'm happy that you started texting us. Hey man, <laughs> I was like, okay, good. It was difficult. <laughs> <laughs> when my phone wasn't dead and it was charged, um, man, let me just say, Vol Nation is serious. How about thousands of people showing up at Pratt Pavilion last night? Yeah, to welcome them back. To welcome back that team. That was pretty dope, man. That's that's a hell of an experience. That's one that's not going to be forgotten I by mean, those thousands players. Thousands of yeah. people. Yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty dope. But I will say, um. I could I, I I could say I would expect that by the um the overflowing Vol Nation that arrived to Detroit and then couldn't even get into the game at first. You know what I'm saying? Because it was phew, they showed up in droves, man. They represented real well. So all the flack that they get, Vol Nation is crazy. They are crazy. It's a good crazy. And I think other SEC schools are the same. We just got to see it, you know what I mean, up close and personally in Detroit. Basketball is becoming such, m- so much more of a thing in the SEC now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it all began that year that they only got three teams in. That's right. And the commissioner's office was like, they hired Mike Trangisi, who's a the longtime basketball goal uh, guy, to try to fix everything. And now, now it's a much different thing. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And the and so love that's, for that's it. fun to see. And and yeah. <laughs> I ran into somebody at uh uh I was out uh having brunch and uh this is before the brunch. game. <laughs> on on I mean, yeah, my birthday's tomorrow, so that's right. Um so it was like a birthday brunch. Kind of April Fool's baby. Yeah, today is April sense. Fool's. Okay, here's the other thing. All right, Kelly Harper got fired. Don't fire somebody on April Fool's Day, man. Don't yeah, let them have that, joke. F- it's that a joke. phone call. <laughs> um, yeah, one week serious. after they lost to NC State, who, by the way, is in the final uh, four. But um, are you guys serious? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but but uh, I ran into some Tennessee fans, and I was wearing Tennessee gear. And the game, this was like at nine thirty. The game wasn't until you know one twenty. And uh, so we talked about the game, and then um, she said. I really hate that Alabama made the Final Four. And I go, okay, but here's the thing. Take their name off that jersey. How much fun is that basketball team to watch? Yep. yep. And those those guys play so hard. You got to love it. Babsy dropped her cell phone, so what if you up, need Babsy? her, uh, come I'm, through I'm, us. That is bunk. It is bunk. It's bunk. I have no access to social media. Switch, please. I could, I could get my email, but I got to get on a computer and... Uh, I can't text or call anybody, and I feel naked. Like I'm just, <laughs> I'm just out here. <laughs> I'm just naked. <laughs> Replacement phone coming tomorrow, naked so I've got to go another 24 hours without. But when, but a replacement phone with none of your old information, all right? Are you? you well, I guess you got to like go get it on mm. the cloud or something. Yeah, see, that's yeah, the thing but, about an iPhone slay. Is all you got to do is just put your info in, and it uh-huh, all comes right back. Yeah. That's, that's pretty dumb. Yeah. 
It's all there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that, that means somebody else has it. What? Some some people, somebody else has it. Some well, people, everybody has all of it. Some people don't do the updates, though, and then lose all their stuff. I can see Babs. Uh, that, that could possibly <laughs> be me. I'm about to find out. I can yeah. see Babs and Pitt and hit and ignore on it. Like, I'm not doing this all stupid right. thing. See, um, see I thought there's this, maybe, like, there's this like screen protector thing you could put on your phone. I thought I had one it, on. Clearly, I did not. No, you did. No, because not I, judging by looking at it. So it happened in the church. It happened at church uh, on Sunday. Bless you. Getting after into the church. Lord's bless your soul. God, yeah, <laughs> bless your soul. God, God like, went after you. Is this a sign? <laughs> yeah, is this a sign from is. God that I I did cuss in the church accidentally? Maybe that's what it was. <laughs> that would accidentally. Yeah, I love accidentally. I dropped something there too. Man. You just fumbling all, all, man and all over the place. I know. So anyway, I picked it up and my screen was shattered and I was like, oh, I'm it's, I'm sure it's just the protective cover. And then I go to like try and peel it off. Nope, nope, nope. It's the whole screen, black and rainbow colors and jumping in and out. So I'm just out here all alone, naked. <laughs> Don't know what to do. Here we go. Uh, Babs is in the wild. I'm in the wild. <laughs> I did go buy a truck today, though. <laughs> nice, too. I can't yeah, wait. There I, you go. I, yeah. I can't wait to have you pick yeah. me up to come to work. Uh, Please. Yeah. Please. I'm come like, hey, uh, Two Rivers Ford, I'm coming out there. Um, I can't text you to let you know that I'm going to come buy this truck. <laughs> but I'm, but on uh, I'm on my way. <laughs> I don't have a phone, but I do have a truck. That's right. <laughs> Ron Slay is back from Detroit. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you, can't, wow. you can't get it up there. I can't get up there. can't get up there. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, man. Like, this is probably my first meal that's sitting beside me since before the game Sunday. Oh, my God. <laughs> Everything else floating in my body is of a liquid, liquid. substance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, And I, and I can't tell you. It's a, it's a liquid diet. I can't tell you your, what the liquid is. That's what's even crazier. It's a it's a it's an assortment of liquids. Did Will from the Ville keep you out of trouble? Yes, he did. <laughs> Good. Yes, he did. But he was just as wild as me, though. That's the craziest thing. He was on the video. They kept showing y'all on television. You know what? We had a blast. <laughs> I saw that video. I mean, I saw the there clip, multiple, and then it there, there were, were multiple, multiple times, times. Yeah. Yeah. and then it like circulated on mm. social media before I lost my phone. I'm like, <laughs> Slay is fried. Babsy. When I say absolutely. Fried. It's Vols Nation. It's Vol Nation fault mm-hmm. because I didn't expect the energy to be like that. Like I've been to bowl games and you know what I mean, like home games and kneeling and followed the baseball team and you feel the energy. Our energy to to experience that as a fan was different. Yeah. Like you could feel it as a player going to the tournament and things like that and seeing Vol. But to be inside it, like the lead up to it, man. Hey, man. Shout out to him. Shout out to him, man. I'm talking about all Uber drivers, new Vols, names, and everything. I would get in. They would say, man, we just dropped such and such off. He was a Vol. And we related to Tony Jones. We way up in Detroit. The coach uh, the coach that coached with the assistant coach that was under Bruce Pearl. Pearl, yeah. Yeah, so. Tony Jones is a great guy. They do a great dude, man. Mm-hmm. But met his family. Like, it, it's basketball is a small world, man, especially when you only have four teams at one site. It's it's hard too as a tournament sport and, and college football is turning into this, but like the finality of it just being over. It's, it's like great. Caitlin Clark talking about they play at six o'clock tonight, and I'm gonna go home and watch that. Yeah. Um but she's I like, I, I'm promised forty more minutes. I'm gonna make the most of it, and that's it. That's and so, it. so the players are emotional after the game. Obviously, this is what Josiah Jordan James had to say. Um, it's hard to put into words like the pain that I feel right now but it's even harder to put into words like the the joy and the happiness I've gotten from being around this team this university for the past for the past five years like these guys mean so much to me and I can't really describe it but I love them I love them so much you know what that speaks to that makes me want to but and and I give me that guy's attitude all day long and you know why, though, you He's blessed by yep. by, by the five years. Yep. He's, he, of course, the moment hurts, mm-hmm. but he's already, like, big picture guy. Yeah, and there's so many things to address from the game, but this being outside will, of the game. Have three hours. Yeah, this being outside, <laughs> exactly. This being outside of the game, man, and take it from a player that had to change coaches, it shakes up the stability of a program 
when you have a revolving door of coaches. So when guys hey. are able to. Somebody's working. Somebody's working. On phone. <laughs> yeah, I can't text or go look at anything on it. It's, it's like our original iPhone. Uh, yeah, I love that. It's <laughs> the original. Sorry, I didn't uh, <laughs> didn't realize the ringer right. was on. If it don't work, it don't work. It's cool, Babs. Yours works. Um, you look at the stability that is set in a program by coaching staff um, going up the chain to administration, and this happens throughout. Um, good programs that are winning, you know what I mean, where it's recycled over and over and you finding that winning formula is bigger than just the game. And you cannot get that without the stability of a head coach in place or an AD in place or a chancellor in place. All of this works together and other sports pulling for each other. So, you know what I mean, to get off the soapbox, I think – Tennessee is in a great spot, and I think it's because of the chain of command. You know what I'm saying? And you have the stability in Rick Barnes. I think with the firing of Kelly, what happened with that is because it's going so good in other sports as well. You know what I'm saying? So I, I mean, you hear Josiah understanding that it is a family. He means that. And being able to, being able to meet these parents – I think that's the good thing about being able to go to these games. Meeting Dalton Connect's mom and dad, like we parked right next to them. Their love is, <laughs> they love all nation. Josiah's grandfather in a, in a, in a walker being mm. there. You know what I'm saying? And when you're going to introduce yourself, he's standing up. Like you ain't got to stand up. Like they understand it's a bigger bond. His pops from the Detroit area. Like, it's, it meeting Zakai's mom and understanding her story, meeting her grandson. Like, it, it's wild, man, to understand that it's bigger than basketball and it is a family environment. And that's all because of the trickle-down effect, but mainly because of the staff that's put together by Coach Barnes. We'll hear from Rick Barnes uh, following the game yesterday. Uh, some incredible words from him. And uh, also Dalton Connect on Rick Barnes. We'll take your phone calls. Go ahead, line them up, and we'll get your reaction. Tennessee falls to Purdue in the Elite Eight, 72-66. Got some stats from that one. Congrats to Alabama for getting in. 15, was it 15 threes? 16. 16 threes. Mm-hmm. Great. That's exactly what you said, too. Ooh. Yep. If, if they can hit. They'll run anybody be, out of the yep, gym. Exactly. And, I, and I've, got a, I've got a great quote from America's new favorite player, DJ Burns, former Vol, uh, of NC State, uh, who, by the way, everybody on social media was running with the same joke. He's already got three fouls in that game against Purdue <laughs> yeah, right now. Uh, we'll be right back. 3HL 1045 The Zone. For over 38 years, oh yeah, Outdoor Lighting Perspectives of Nashville. They've been making homes stunning with landscape lighting, and they are Nashville's oldest landscape lighting company and the leader in LED technology. Uh, You want to light up your night with Outdoor Lighting Perspectives? They can do festival lights, path lights, wall washing, tree lighting, area lighting. They did that for my driveway, which has been amazing. They do maintenance on lighting systems they did not install. They even do commercial lighting and holiday lighting, too, by the way, if you're interested. Uh, You've seen their work because they uh, do all the lighting at Cheekwood estates and gardens for the past eight years they've installed and maintained their holiday lights at cheekwood they do a phenomenal job if you're thinking about outdoor lighting now is a great time to call my friends at outdoor lighting perspectives of nashville because for all customers that purchase a lighting install up until april 18th they have a team called light the way for the rally foundation uh, research for child childhood cancer research and outdoor lighting perspectives will give a hundred dollar yeah. donation to Rally Foundation in the customer's name up until April 18th. So if you're thinking about it, now's a great time to do it. You can also help an awesome cause and get a great product. Outdoor Lighting Perspectives of Nashville. Go check them out online. Outdoorlights.com slash Nashville. I want to tell you about Diggins Serving Landscape Supply. It's time, man. Get that yard going. And uh, you need to check out Diggins Serving Landscape Supply. You can do it online, diggingsupply.com. Trey Hartsuck here with more on how they can help you get that lawn looking great.
Brent, what's up, dude? Hey, I know it's Monday, but hey, not a bad time to start looking at the Toro Red Tag sale. My favorite time of the year because it's the time where people realize, hey, I might need a new mower because they get it out. They're like, man, maybe we can lend this thing to one more season. They find out pretty quick it's not going to make it. Best thing to do is come into Diggins Turf and Landscape Plot, sit down, talk to us, let us know. Let us know what kind of yard you have, what it looks like, and we can get you the best machine that you need. And it doesn't matter, Brent, whether you have a small yard, big yard, anything in between. Toro has the perfect machine for you, anywhere from $1,000 off on some select units at the very top with the Z Masters. But like we said, if you just need a push mark, we can do that for you. Also, the time of year where that second round of pre-emergent needs to be going out, make sure we do that. Don't want to make it look great up until this point and then let it go now because if you don't do that second round of pre-emergent, you're probably going to get a lot of grassy weeds in the lawn, and that we do not want. Stop in and see. We'd love to talk to you about equipment. Love to talk to you about your yard. Convenient located all over Middle Tennessee. Got locations in Nashville, Hendersonville, Murfreesboro, Bellevue, Brentwood, Lamar, Mount Julia, and Franklin. If you can't get a hold of us, check us out online, dickensupply.com.
3 HL 104.5 The Zone. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, Ron Slay with you. Final Four Field is set Saturday, 5.09 p.m. NC State, the 11 seed against 1 seed Purdue. Purdue an 8.5 point favorite. State. Stupid Purdue. <laughs> 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 America's yes, new yes. favorite player, DJ Burns of NC State, listed at 6'9", 275. You believe that? No, um, 6'9", well, probably 6'8", or 6'7 and a half. 335. He is not 275. No, I'm 270. Yeah, no. <laughs> there's, there's no there's, there's no way. He's we are nowhere in the same vicinity of weight. No. How much fun is that guy though? Like he's oh, living his him. best life right now. Love the him. way he was smiling, uh, sorry Babs. But he was just smiling at mm-hmm. everything and everyone. We having a good time. I mean, it, it, it pays to win. He said, nobody cares. This is what his quote was. Uh, nobody cares about a loser. That's why I decided to be a winner. End quote. That's a good one to go live with. I mean, like a clown. <laughs> yeah, I know. 29 that. boys later. I know. That's like, what a clown. It's fun. But it's going to be fun to see him Dude, with Edie. They better yeah, I, officiate that game better. Don't give me this foul trouble crap. If you put DJ Burns in foul trouble, they're done by like 30. Yeah. And then we're all sitting here watching it. Yeah. I will say Matt Painter, the head coach of Purdue, does a really good job of communicating through the media. Mm-hmm. Um, leading up to that Tennessee game, he had already, after their win, was talking about, like, when you play Tennessee, you got to understand it's tackle football. It's going to be a physical mm-hmm. match. So it's it's already it, – it, I mean, you're human, man. You're human. Um, the officials are human. They hear these things, you know what I mean? And then when the coach goes out there and says it the same way on the court, I mean, you, you listen to him. Uh, and I right. thought and Barnes did a, a lot as far as going at the rails. To me, I thought he should have got a tick. I thought he should have got a tick to try to shift it. But was outside the game of that, too tight? I don't think it was. I thought, they had, Tennessee had like three chances late to take the lead yeah. and missed all three of those. Yeah, I, I think, man, when you look at it, the people ask, what should you do? As far as getting others involved, like is and you once you're there and you're seeing it, you can hear what plays are being called and this weighs into it. So it's feast of famine when you have a gift and a curse like Dalton Connect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So coming down the stretch, if you're Purdue, you go through you go to your bucket getter. Your bucket getter is Zach Eady. Who never left the lane ever. Without question. So people can talk about the fouls, but it, but he impacted the game and, and the lack of calls all the way around impacted the game completely. I'm not saying that's why anybody lost. Yeah. Don't, don't bend me in there. No, I'm, I'm going to say that. Though. But it did, it did impact how that game went. And like Rick Barnes said, look, he's in there five, six, seven, eight, nine seconds. It's hard to, like, what are you going to do? do? It, there is absolutely nothing you can do, honestly. Um, but when you look at it for Tennessee, they go to their bucket getter. Their bucket getter is Dalton Connect. So when you ask, man, why don't why don't the other get, the others help like Josiah Santi, like why don't somebody help them? The plays are being called for Dalton Connect. So if it's a pin down, the ball's automatically in Dalton Connect's hands. So he's caught in a spot where you're a scorer. Mm-hmm. In order for him for others to get involved, that means he has to become a playmaker. You saw it once with the lob to JP Estrella. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, he's coming off the screen. His guy's behind him. It's him and the big. So the pull up is there. You gotta ask yourself, do you want Dalton to shoot that? Or do you want him to drive a little closer and kick it out to somebody else to shoot? I mean, it's 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 all in the eye to I behold mean, them, man. We, we I mean, talked about what the game plan was going to be Thursday and Friday. They give up the mid-range jumper and the three-pointer, and that's what Tennessee took and made. Yep. I'm, I'm glad you said that, though, because there was a moment later in that game mm-hmm. where I felt like it was too forced with Dalton with him. Connect, yeah. right? Because, like, I felt like they almost panicked and felt like that was their only... only like, let's go to him. Like, oh, yep. it's got to be Dalton. It's got to be Dalton. Yep. But it didn't have to be Dalton. Somebody else could have stepped out. But that makes sense. When you put it that way, too, when you talk about the plays that are called, how yep. they're designed for him. Yeah. But I, I almost felt like, you know, you're it right. was it, you're relying too much on him. You don't have to. But you did in that moment. It, it's pretty and it amazing. it came back to bite you. Yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing to watch both of those teams because they both did it. Yeah. That, it, I mean, it's very similar. Dalton Connect, 37 points, uh, 14 to 31 from the floor. So he shot 45.1%. The rest of the team made 10 field goals mm-hmm. and shot 32%. So if you're looking at it analytically, I'd rather have the guy shooting 45% 
going at it than the rest of the team who's shooting 32%. Purdue was the same exact way. Yep. He was 13 to 21. The rest of the team was 11 for 32. Exactly. So he shot 62%. The rest of the team shot 34%. It was a fascinating game from what you guys both just described in terms of what do you do down the stretch and, and how do you go through people. Mm-hmm. But 25 fouls to 12. So that, that's Tennessee what a problem 17 lasts. 17 on the season. That's what a problem lasts for me. If the discrepancy in the fouls called and the free throw shooting wasn't a thing, then we have a totally different ball game, and I do believe that the players decide the game. Each and that's team. my only pushback with people saying that, man, they they didn't just they didn't they didn't give them the game. They kind of did, because you asked the people. I heard Blaine talking about, um, and you know I usually agree with him, man. But why don't you attack the big man? Well, the attacking force was Tobey Awaka. Tobey was given the ball on the block, boom, hook shot. Boom, turnaround shot. Like cooking. Five but if fouls you, in 14 yeah, minutes. If you allow him to play, you are attacking him. <laughs> That's your force right there. So it's different. And, I, I mean, it is a difficult job to sure. officiate this guy. For sure. But me being a physical post player, this is my only pushback. Me being a physical post player, regardless if I'm fouling and defending guys, me working to get position is different. Like, I'm going to get some fouls getting position because it's such a tussle and me trying to carve out space, being as big as I am, it's the boom, boom room. Yeah. So if you let us play, it's cool. But you cannot take me away once the guy gets the ball and then is ready to attack if you're not going to be detailed and call walks, three seconds. Like, it's, you're un, you cannot defend that at 7-4 because if he gets two feet in the paint and shoots a hook shot, if he misses – you know who the ball, the trajectory of the ball is coming back to, regardless if I'm the boxing shooter. out or not? It's him. So it's, you're, you're, it's, it's defenseless, man, if the game is called that way. I was fine with them letting them play foul each. Everybody was fouling. Mm-hmm. Like, if you if you could have seen it, it was like, hey, dude, this is a bloodbath down there. Yeah. Like, just let them go, though. I thought both two, both teams were cool with it until you put a guy on the line and get him 22 free throws. I, that's that's I've, a difference. I've never in my life seen – a guy draw 16 fouls and be called for one. That's and, and play 30, like Babs just said, with off air, 39 minutes and so, 30 seconds. In the that's sweet what, 16. That like, is what, what is amazing to me. Crazy. That dude played the entire game. That's crazy. Yeah, they had no bench points. Zero. Yeah. Zero yeah. bench yeah. points. He had to yep. play the whole game. So in the last two games, Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Edie has played 77 minutes and committed three fouls. It's tough, man. It's tough. Like you can say, attack them, do this, do that. It's not attacking once. Well, there are all kinds of clips on social yeah. media where he was fouling. And that's the thing. It's, <laughs> it, and it's not necessarily when he has the ball. Yeah. It's, and like I'm saying, it's when he's carving out space, when he's carving out space for rebounds, you're boxing out. His elbow is automatically in your throat. So mm-hmm. it's up to the ref. Okay, that's his height. You know what I mean? It's almost like a, a, a when you're playing baseball and your strike range changed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Your strike zone is a little different. It's the same thing with boxing out. Like, your elbow's there. Do I call this foul? Do I let it go? It's it's up to the officials. That's why I thought it was going to be big coming into it. And I thought Painter did a great job of going through the media to go on and paint that to understand. Yeah. It's harder to get those is. off-ball fouls, too. It is. Well, I mean, he threw a walker to the ground twice. Yeah, and a walker threw him to the ground. His, the, the, and they called it. And he's Purdue big. as a whole. Yeah. Moving screens it's and and all so of that. many hip checks. I mean, yep. from top to things. bottom, yep. it wasn't just Edie; it was yeah. all of them. Like, yeah. and so that that's where you're like, okay, you're letting them play, yeah, and that's cool, and that's fine as long as it, it both continues. Yep. Right. All right, let's go to the yep. phones. Let's get some reaction. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Keith in Nashville, uh, first up today. Keith, what's up? What's good? Yo, what up, hey. Keith? They said that game was fake. And they let that boy walk, travel, <laughs> set illegal screen, foul, <laughs> have everybody that guards him be called for a foul, camp out in the lane. Yeah. <laughs> and Tennessee dominated them. Yeah. That boy is fake. That whole game was fake. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you, Keith. I, I looked at it, man, watching the Thank game. You, I was saying it. the same thing. And the reason I, I have no voice is because when they were on that end, I kept counting, like, Okay, in the NBA, Giannis Antetokounmpo, when he goes to the foul line, the the they say he takes more than 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. So when he goes to opponent's gyms, they count, the, they count. You know what I mean? So that's what I was doing when he was in the lane, and he was not resetting. It's one thing. All you have to do is 
This is inside. So depending on the official, mm -hmm. okay. they'll let you get one You're foot out and let two. you reset. You're supposed to get two, yeah. okay. but I'm cool with them getting one foot out. The man would get the ball, take two dribbles, pound, get into the paint, throw back out when the double comes, and not leave, and not repost. He would just stay in his same spot. Yeah, that's you cannot do that. Like, okay, if I'm working for a position, you get thousand one, thousand two, two and a half. You get the ball. They sometimes reset the clock. Yeah, because you get the ball. Okay, boom, thousand one, thousand two. When you throw it back out, you don't get to reset the clock and stay right there and wait till the ball to come back to pick up your count again. So do, no, do it you was think amazing. that's just lazy officiating in that their eyes just go with the ball out? No, I, and I don't and don't pay attention to him. I think I honestly think that the officials didn't want to be the cause of him being put out of the game. I honestly think they wanted the national play of the year to advance. I I honestly believe that. Now, if Tennessee shot lights out, I thought, okay, cool, they'll live with it. But we can't. But who's I coming to see? Who's coming to see? That. Who's coming to see anybody else on Purdue? You're coming. To, this is the star. You're coming to see him. You're not putting me out the game for a call like three seconds. Uh, with without him, you're not like, taking me out the game for three seconds. They're an NIT team. I know, but take, I uh, don't think the officials. I'm serious. Care. I, no, I honestly do. Really? Yeah, I, because I he's a star of the game. If that. I'm in the game right now, you're not coming to see you. I'm the star. They're coming to see me. I mean, so I officiate get, the game where you're gonna. You're not gonna to take it extent, out of my hand. That does but, happen in yeah. the NBA for sure yeah, because people because people man, pay to me. come see the stars. Trust me. I, I don't, but you think it goes goes on in the man, college level? I, yes, I believe it was. I don't think they did it purposely, but I do okay. believe that there's no way they were gonna call three seconds and make them change their game plan for Zach Eady. You know, no you, way. The most interesting stat. The back-to-back -back national play of the year. Yeah. No, sir. Y'all know who has been busted out in the first round every year until yeah, now. Yeah, it ain't no way. Um, Y'all know I, know I love going back to look at the numbers. I found a really interesting stat. Both teams shot 63.6% .6 from the free throw line. Yeah. Purdue won by six. Um, They shot 22 more free throws. They made 14 more. Mm-hmm. It's, it's they both shot 63.6%. So if you just even that out. Yep. It's crazy. It's, it's funny I, how numbers work. It's, it's, it's different when you watch it, Babs. I'm telling you, if you know how the game is played, like I, do, I would never I would never expect Dalton Connect to file out of the game. No way, no. That's the star. You What moves it, what makes that energy crazy in that gym is the stars. Unless somebody comes out the blue and Zakai goes crazy, Braden Smith goes crazy for Purdue. These who do we come to see? Two time national player of the year. Who do we come to see? Dalton Connect. Don't you dare disrupt what they got going on. It's there's no way. I ain't saying they put a, a newsletter out or anything like that, but in your mind psychologically, you've been watching college basketball all this time. Who's the show? Take him out of the game. You think, man, that was 80, 85 to 15 in there. That was a home game. Them folk, Purdue was, I ain't know, but them folks was rowdy. And it was beautiful to see. Like, it was a great atmosphere. You don't take the key cog out. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Mm -mm. He's got the fouls is something else. But you're not going to take him out of the game now, by saying three seconds. That changes like the whole – that yeah. that's, that's dumb. You're taking control of the game, but, man. But how, how do you think this NC State, this DJ Burns and Edie matchup is going to go because there's so much attention on it now. So about, it's, about it is. the lack of fouls yep. being called right, on it's, him. It's going to be tough. And DJ Burns is going to – his game him. is to back yep, him down. He's going like, to meet him. He's like a 70s player. It ain't even it – it's not even that, that part of your to me. It's the DJ Burns where you meet him – Coming down the floor, you meet Zach Eady at the three at the three point line or the free throw line to knock him off from going towards the rim to start the post up. That right there is a collision waiting to happen. Boom, a foul can be called. Are you gonna call it? Or are you gonna let it go? Okay, cool. You let it go. That means he gets to work down, push him off, get to his spot. DJ gets to push back. When do you clean it up? Is the question, and who falls at fault? That's where the game changes. So it's all it's and you all have in the officials. conversation prior to the game. And, like, listen, coaches, this is how it's going to be called. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you got to adjust from now. Because I don't want either one of those guys fouling out. No, if they we foul need to out, see Like, it. if DJ Burns is having to sit on the bench and it's foul over. trouble, it's I, over like, as, a, as a basketball fan, I don't want any part of that. It's over for 
Though. It's not just that. It's just aesthetically not a pleasing yeah. experience for a basketball You want to see the stars, especially at this point. Once you get to Elite Eight, Sweet 16, Final Four, like that's the stars sell the tickets. Filipowski filing out of the NC State game was silly to me. That was silly but if Burns me. has like 3,000 the first half and ED has zero, uh, yeah. give me a break. The games throughout the tournament have been officiated in all physical games. I mean, it is. I, I told y'all all year. I've physical. been watching Purdue all year, and they are frustrating as hell to watch. Yeah. I can't stand it, and I kept doing it. And my whole <laughs> thing is, too, Zach Eady is a Boring. force. That man is really good, skilled. I talked about it last week. He don't need no help. He's that good. He don't need no help. Is he NBA good? That's what that's what because he's Alliance projected second round pick and people yep. don't understand that. That's that's what the line is drawn. Like who is he going to defend in the NBA? Not somebody running around a three point line. You know well, who the I mean, seven four guy is that's running around NBA, like him? Though. Yeah, but I mean, you, you at least got to act like you're trying. Right. His seven four <laughs> matchup is saying, Victor like, Wimbanyama. You know yeah. what he is on the three point line right. on the ball. He'll go right it's around. Such him. a different game. You know now. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Coach T, what up? Hey, baby, well, first of all, happy birthday early to you, B. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> hey, 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 Don, I got some of them, uh, a couple of my Adidas joggers who want some I'm sending to you so you ain't got to be buck naked no more. You know, <laughs> hey, you laid on that phone. Okay. Thank you. you. We might need Thank to explain you. that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Her, ph- her phone's dead. She <laughs> said she feels better. Slay, you, hey, Slay, you look good out there on that TV, man. You man. look like I can still put a uniform on. <laughs> I wish I could have, boy. I would use five fouls for sure. Man, go and get that job so I can be your assistant. Told you I run around and recruit for you, man. Listen, they gonna hate me on this, man. You, you, y'all, first of all, you came to Big Ten country, baby. Mm-hmm. That's how we gonna play. We not gonna let you come doing SEC football. You, you bang us around with pads on. You cool with, with dragging people, but now you get bumped and grind around in this basketball court. and You want to complain about it? Mm-hmm. Ain't no complaints. You saw the star. You, you had Ryan connect. He gave you what he could give you. The difference was Zach Eady zeroed that out. Everybody else had to come to play. So basically, it was like. Me and you, how many times you was a Christmas tree ornament back in the day? A lot. <laughs> yeah. They hung all over you. You know how that goes. Yeah. So when, when you're looking at that, the big difference was Matt Painter did the same thing he did in Hawaii. He made adjustments down the stretch against Tennessee for, for, uh, for the uh, Maui Classic, and he did it again in the tournament. And the difference is Tennessee couldn't react to it. Now, give or take, you, you, you talk about three seconds in the lane. Come on. I was at... I was on one of my referees a few few months ago doing the basketball season. You know what the referee told me? Say, what? What? I, ain't, I haven't called three seconds in three years. So, mm-hmm. And we talking about high school. Yep. So if that's the case, they're not going to worry about, you know, one in and one out the lane where the referee resets. Because like Brent said, when they kick that ball out, is the referee looking at his feet or he's looking at where that ball is going? Yep. Now it's a repost and a box out. And unfortunately, you know, when, when go back to that first quarter, when Edie posted up a couple of times, mm. you know, a dude, he was leaning on him with two forearms, right? Yep. They didn't call anything until Zach got the ball and went to make his move. At that point, you got to do what? Gotta release. Hands off. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So since he didn't release, we're going to say, okay, we're going to get you for bumping and grinding. Yep. Now, when Tennessee tried to do it, don't get me wrong, I, I know that Zach put a couple of forearms oh, okay. on him. <laughs> okay. Right. He scared a few people, and then when they came down the lane, what happened? He he he, he took connect, man, get it up out of here. We, yep. we don't play like that. Yep. So they didn't attack do when they could have attacked. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Coach. If if do you consider me a physical player? Oh yeah, I'll see you. I I've never in my entire life shot twenty two free throws. That, that, that's see now that's now that now the only thing I can say about that they ain't give you the ball enough. Oh no, <laughs> but let's see. Yeah, <laughs> Come on, what are you talking about? You know I'm rim running. I'm rim running to <laughs> no, my toe and fall out my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> You were right about Burns. Yeah. It's going to be it's gonna be a couple of freight trains meeting, you know, between mm-hmm. the I just the hope they let them both arc. play, man. They're going to let them play and go see what's going on. I yeah. but, I I, agree. Yeah, but I'm going to give you one last shout out. Okay. These girls tonight, this is about to be a bomb burner yes. in this final, I call yeah. this true final four. Right. Everybody both keeps of them. talking both about games. LSU mm-hmm. and Iowa. If you're sleeping on Juju Watkins, yeah. you better put the TV on. You better believe it. You better believe it. They're dog. underdogs too. Yep. Yep. Take yep. take the, uh, take take the, take that on that bet. Yeah, yeah. Take you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm rolling with Juju, baby. <laughs> yeah. All appreciate right. it, hey, thanks, Coach. Hey, appreciate, appreciate it, you guys. No doubt. I mean, that's where the women's game is. Seriously, I'm just gonna sit down and watch four hours of basketball mm-hmm. tonight. Women's basketball. Yeah.
But to his point, that's that's the only thing I'm saying. I, I play a physical style. I know what it's like to carve out and get guys in foul trouble. If you attempt to look in, that's the thing. You, I've never, ever been able to go shoot 22 free throws. I've never, ever drawn 16 fouls, ever. And I post up a lot. You know what I hear the official saying? Get out of the lane. Wait a minute, what? Get out of the lane. That's my lane. It's the boom boom room. But, well, well, why? We both in here wrestling. It's cool, ain't it? Like, it's, <laughs> it's okay. Oh, well, okay. All right. I mean, it's different. More phone calls when we come back. More of your reaction. Reese and Laura want to chime in. 615-737-1045. What's happening, good people? Ron Slay here with YWesley.com. Wesley Mortgage, currently recruiting top mortgage challenge and and now hiring. All you got to do is understand who's heading this up. That's Chuck McDowell, a local Nashville native, a friend of mine, man. I'm talking about when you sit down and meet with Chuck McDowell, you're going to understand the relationship and the core values that he holds of Nashville. Always helping you out. Always trying to give back. And he cares about the community, just like you and I. Proud to serve them as well. He reinvests in the people and the places that make Nashville. Nashville is such a wonderful place. We're still holding on to that here, people. While other mortgage companies are downsizing, Chuck McDowell and Wesley Mortgage Team, they are rapidly expanding in Nashville. So why wouldn't you want to be a part of the team? When you want to be associated with teams like the Tennessee Titans, Music City Grand Prix, Nashville Predators, multiple realtor and mortgage events throughout the year, you should be over with Wesley Mortgage. Whywesley.com. Give Chuck McDowell and them the chance. I promise you, you won't regret it. You're Nashville. Be Nashville. Whywesley.com. All right. Sometimes it is just time to upgrade things in your home, right? And uh, maybe sometimes it's things you don't really want to upgrade, but you know it's time and you know you have to, like your windows and your doors. Uh, yeah, it was time for us in my rental property and my home, and I chose Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville. Loved the experience. Uh, loved the people there. Just went and visited the showroom, which is amazing, by the way. Uh, and you might be surprised to learn how affordable the replacement windows are from Pella. Affordable and, of course, the best quality out there. Pella was voted number one by Nashville Homeowners as the leading window brand in Nashville and in a bunch of other categories. That's based on a 2022 survey of leading window brands among homeowners. And on top of that, they have a good deal going on for you right now. I love a good deal. Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville are giving you a good deal right now. 50% off qualifying installs, no money down, no interest, no payments for 12 months. That's an and in between those. Yes, call them 615-249-1910 or just go visit PellaofNashville.com.
Three Talk 1045, the zone. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, and Ron Slay. Dalton Connect on Rick Barnes. Quote, I've never had a relationship as close with a coach. How many guys say that about him when they yeah. get done? Uh, I've never had a relationship as close with a coach. He told me he would coach me hard, and he did his part of the deal, and he did so much more than that. End quote. Yeah. And you saw the pictures of, well, maybe you didn't, but Josiah Jordan James hugging him. Mm-hmm. Played his soundbite earlier. We'll talk. We'll do it again later. You'll hear from Coach Barnes later. Got to give credit to those guys, man. Uh, um, we also need to play Edie's mm-hmm. post game presser because uh, there's a lot of people that had issues with it. Yeah, I thought that was interesting how he handled it. I didn't have an issue with it, but I don't know. A lot of lot of Tennessee fans did. I, I just think we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get. I said okay. I didn't think that was the stage for that. that like that, that's because you're making it about you at that point. And maybe he felt like and that. What, maybe what, that's the chip that made him push that way. She mentioned though. Rick Barnes by na- he he mentioned Rick Barnes by name as someone who who stopped recruiting him. Yeah. But what he didn't understand is it, nobody recruited you, Zach Eddie, because you you wasn't good, and you cannot be overlooked if you're at a school like IMG. IMG automatically has a spotlight on it. So like it takes somebody like Matt Painter to reach out and extend an arm and you being able to say, all right, coach, I'm going to stick with it. Zach Eady in freshman and sophomore year could barely pick his feet up and run and make it up to court three times. So, hell, yeah, a Even lot of people are going to pass had, over you. He had a hard time with You know him. what I'm saying? And that's what it was about, coming back and being in great condition. Hell, yeah. 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 Like, dude, pat yourself on the back, homie. Like, then that's what I was telling Babs going out of it, man. Make sure that I'm not saying that I feel like um, Zach Eady isn't good or anything like like dude is a dog and my whole thing is a dog don't need help is my only thing so you don't need an advantage which was created by sending you to the foul lane by the way the game is officiated just let it play and I'm cool with that so that was, that was my whole thing I wanted to make sure I'm being clear with that so it ain't no hate like I love like <laughs> boom boom room yeah. That man, that man, that that man got his like, own room. Yeah, yeah he doesn't leave. <laughs> like, like, for what? You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, it's like he's in the gated community within the gated community. <laughs> yeah, like By the way, dog, Hunk man. is going to pull that so that okay. we can play it for those that did not hear him yeah. good. say that. We'll, yeah. we'll have that here in a second. All right. Lord help us here. Reese and Laura, they put $300 on Tennessee. Reese, what's up? Laura, what's up? <coughs> hey, Laura's out. She's taking our brother came and bought a shovel to get a snake. She's taking it back to the house. Uh, <laughs> it's just real life in the hood. Uh, Babs, first off, Babs, we got we got something else in common, Babs. Yeah, we neither one of us have cell phones right now. Man, man, you're smarter than me. All right, you beat me to it. Big story, I don't know living. how you <coughs> function without one because I'm not functioning well. <laughs> Well, I'm just it, out it here. It takes about two weeks to get used to, and then you just get used to it. Uh, <laughs> Big Slayer, you with me? You know it, baby. So, first off, I'm proud of the boys, but I got a good story that's going to cheer all of us up. Are you ready? Let's go. So, we're ta- I'm, we're tailgating Sunday before the game, mm-hmm. hoping for a big victory. Didn't happen. By the way, did you just hear that whistle? <laughs> no. What was the whistle? Was it a dog no, whistle? No, you didn't hear that? Uh, Zach Eady just got fouled again. <laughs> 16 uh, times. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Only one foul on him, but uh, yeah. he'll never make it in the NBA because Kevin Durant and everybody else is seven foot to run right around him. That's fine. Uh, hey, real quick, somebody yeah. somebody in the chat was like, well, Sean Bradley played in the NBA. I'm like, yeah, the d- game was so much different. Yeah, this is a totally compare. different game now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe Bowie will come back. Uh, <laughs> so, so Sunday before the game, it's like, I don't know, 11 o'clock. I got my three lawn chairs out in the lawn, right? And I got Reese O. Reese in one, and I've got Midnight Reese in another one, and I got Spooky Reese in another one. I'm walking the dog, Lily Laura Reese, in, on the leash. And I've got uh, Little Boo Reese on my hat, on my cowboy hat. And I've got Cup Cup Reese just walking next to me on the sidewalk. All of a sudden, I hear sirens. And I'm like, oh, crap, I'm going to jail. Because I've done got like 12 empty beers in the yard. I've got a beer in my hand, a beer in my pocket. I don't fight it. I just roll on down the sidewalk. And all of a sudden, he comes up. Cop comes out, Bowling Green Cop. And I was like, hey, man, he's scaring the kids. He's like, oh, I'm sorry about that. And I said, well, why'd you do that? And he's like, no, nah, man, my wife's an animal lover. 
and she's not going to believe this. I got to take a picture. <laughs> and so he wouldn't send me the picture because I had a beer in my hand. He was worried about social media, I guess. Laura's in the car, got Rocky talk on Rocky Top on repeat, and the the trunk open with a cooler full of like twenty some beers. We got fifty wings delivered from Roosters, which y'all know those are good. We brought you some of those, and I got a cop on the sidewalk with all these animals taking a picture with me while all the drug dealers in the neighborhood are looking. I'm like, well, this doesn't look good, and and, and then. You know, I turn around and look, and guess how many of the cats moved out of their lawn chairs? How many? None of them. <laughs> and as as I leave, I tell the cop, I'm like, hey, I took a picture with you as a favor to you. I need a favor from you. And he said, what's that? And I said, on three, we yell, go balls, go big orange. And that cop in his Kentucky uniform on three said go big orange <laughs> big boy what do we do what do we do i'm proud of us i love us i love y'all happy monday good old rocky top Woo! <laughs> yeah. it's hard it's hard on me right now Reese. my voice is gone it's late at night the energy go baby let's do it <laughs> there's reese yeah. um <laughs> Uh, yeah, somebody... I just have this middle picture of that place. <laughs> yes. He paints right. it. He definitely paints it. It ain't right. Yeah. Um, somebody, I can't find it now, put that uh, Zach, he, the ringer. Oh, here it is. Bryce says, they, uh, the ringer has Edie going 11th overall in the draft. NBA draft.net is the one that I use, and they've got him going in the second round to Philadelphia pick 36. Man, also, these are these mm. are people that come over these that are not affiliated with anybody's NBA uh, franchise people. Yeah, exactly. 615-737-1045. More coverage of this game. Also, we've got some Titans information. Um, We've got the top five spenders in the offseason in the NFL all coming up. 615-737-1045. They're in there. Babsy said, Twitch, please, in case you was wondering. Hey, what's happening, good people? Brentwood Jewelry. BrentwoodJewelry.com is where you need to go to. 7012 Church Street East, located right there, smack dead in the heart of Brentwood, just off Franklin Road. Exceptional style, exceptional deals every single day for over 50 years. And, yeah, my voice may sound like this, but believe me, the jewelry does not look like my voice sounds. You hear that? It's beautiful. My voice isn't beautiful at this time, but the jewelry is. And anything you're looking for, I promise you, I promise you they're going to help you out. You walk in there and you let them know what you're looking for. They have it all laid out. And you can also set an appointment. You can come back and put you in a room, get things lined up for you. Watches, engagement rings, whatever it may be, nice jewelry pieces for anniversaries, whatever it is that you're looking for, you cannot lose with Brentwood Jewelry. You don't feel comfortable with walking in the store. You think you may be rushed, which you won't. But you can go to BrentwoodJewelry.com and skim over everything. And I promise you, you'll see the same exceptional style and deals right there for over 50 years online. It's BrentwoodJewelry.com. All right, Nashville is an awesome place to live. We know that. We've got great sports, great entertainment, great restaurants. Uh, We also have one of the top volume Ford dealers in the country right here in Middle Tennessee, and that is Two Rivers Ford. If you haven't checked out Two Rivers Ford lately, they have something for everyone. And when it comes to purchasing a vehicle, I would know because I actually just bought an F-150 today from Two Rivers Ford like a couple of hours ago. Uh, Two Rivers Ford has teams of experts for every type of vehicle. uh, And I just spent like an hour with Lonnie, my guy who was going through everything in my new truck so that I knew exactly how to work all of it. They have electric vehicle and hybrid experts, Bronco experts, work truck experts. You'll always be in excellent hands with the Two Rivers sales team. They were amazing during my entire process as well. If you're a business owner, Two Rivers Ford also has a commercial fleet division, entire team dedicated to getting your work trucks and vans for the best price and the best financing. There's a reason that Two Rivers Ford has been around for over four decades. They're the best. Two Rivers Ford, the South's most trusted Ford dealer.
Good afternoon from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm Joe Hong. This is all about Tennessee as the Vols have announced that Lady Vols head coach Kelly Harper is officially out. Five years, she has 108 wins, and she helped get the Lady Vols to the Sweet 16 twice. VFL Derek Barnett has a brand new deal with the Houston Texans. If you missed a little bit of last season, he got no starts for the Eagles, then gets wet. Waved, and then for the Texans, he starts four different games, including one against the Titans where he had a sack. He finished two and a half sacks on the year and 11 quarterback hits. And the NFL also has a performance-based pay system for players that do not have a high salary but get a ton of snaps in games. And VFL Trey Smith just received an extra $865,000 for the amount of snaps he took in 2024 for the world champs for all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs you need to visit USSTN.com breaking news at once on your home for the Vols the flagship station for you Tennessee Titans as well as home 23HL this is 104.5 The Zone Three HL 104.5 The Zone what up Nashville Brent Doherty with you on a beautiful day in the Music City Bazzi Yes. What up, Babsy? That's bunk. She broke her That's phone, right. so she can't check the weather. She just has to rely on me. Uh, by I the got way, nothing. severe weather tomorrow, so uh, oh, really? head on a swivel. Yep. Like what kind of severe? Like severe. Like bad. Really? During yeah. our show. Tomorrow? During our show? Tomorrow. I think it's going to start raining tonight. I'll have to, I haven't oh, looked in a minute. man, I hate the rain. I do too. Especially when you get your car clean. Especially when you buy rain. a new car. Yeah, you want to get to enjoy it. Want it to rain on the cleanness of a car? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Man. Anyway, yes, beautiful but day in Music get, City. So when I um, was going from one radio station to the other, you have this window of time where you have a non-compete. So I went and I sold printing. I sold cars at Beeman. And hmm. one thing I learned when I was selling cars, um, the the color of the car or vehicle that shows the most like dirt and stuff um, is actually black, not white. That's like, what I heard. Yeah, yeah, white you can clean easier. Yeah. I it. Guess what I did? White truck. Yep. Good job, baby. White baby. <laughs> I mean, my last I car, I didn't run through a car wash for three straight years. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, wow. do better on this one. <laughs> I have like the monthly miles auto spa thing. <laughs> I could that's, do that. That's smart. I, I might have there to do that. Anytime I want, <laughs> which is often. Slay Dog's here without a voice. No voice in sight. Here you go. You don't need a voice. It's right yeah, here. Thank you. This is the end of the season. I gave my all. <laughs> you gave your all for mm-hmm. Tennessee? Given his all for Tennessee this weekend, given his all for you guys with his take on. That's right. Tennessee basketball throughout the course of today's show. We've got a lot going on uh, in addition to Tennessee basketball. You can watch the show live, YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Twitch, please. Uh, Pinwheel 2017 is usually Reese, but it says, it's Laura. Sorry I couldn't get on the call. I'm still in tears. Love y'all. Go Vols. (laughs) By the way, me, uh, and then Reese chimes in, me and Laura got kicked out of church, Babs. (laughs) I, that's where my phone shattered. So, <laughs> Joshua broke her phone, Duke lost, and hail coming after she purchased a new truck. Yes, indeed. Is there going to be hail? Potentially. No! I told you it's going to be bad. Yeah. Really? What in the Hades? <laughs> well, I mean, it's that time of year. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> It's not that time of year, y'all. Hey, there's like a parking garage for like an apartment complex about a half a mile from here. Just go park in that thing. Oh. Mm. I don't even know if I can fit We, we actually pull through that. It's a condo building. We pull through that to get to Demumbrian so we don't have to mess with the traffic Shh, circle. Don't, Some don't, don't do. tell our secret. So, yeah. You know, the because last we, used like the go, we used to go through the hotel parking lot. And you said it on there and they locked us out. They gated us. I didn't think you could do that. Like, I thought you had to have like access through the back. Nope. nope. Yeah, walk. <laughs> walk through the back. That's what they say. Uh, let's see. Yeah, tomorrow. Cut let's see. Off. Showers and thunderstorms likely. Thunderstorms could oh. be strong and possibly severe in the afternoon. Damaging winds, large hail, and possible tornado with some, stor- some storms. Oh, no. High of 72. 
Winds out of the south southwest at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Chance of rain, 90%. Oh, man. That sounds terrible. <laughs> I think you should Uber to work to keep your – well, yeah. Oh, wait. Can you pull your truck in your garage? We're supposed to clean your garage a couple weeks ago. The garage is clean. Hey. Can you pull your truck in there? I don't know. <laughs> I think it might be too big. <laughs> <laughs> If like, it is in the garage, I think Mr. Babs is going to have to do it because I'm afraid I'm going to take out everybody. I told her uh, <laughs> during the break, I was like, you got to learn how to park that thing. I said, no. you got to park that thing backwards. Mm. And she goes, yeah, somebody's got to teach me how. I got Y'all, I, Babsy. I we had we had baby Babs first ever soccer game on Saturday. Yeah. That parking lot was the tightest thing ever. <laughs> and at this point, I was still test driving this vehicle. Yeah, so yeah, it was not mine. Super careful, yeah. And I was like, I don't know what to do. We're going to miss soccer because I don't I think park. I can back into yeah. this spot. And there's like kids running around everywhere. And oh, man. You can see, like, what's, what's going on? It was on? so stressful. <laughs> so I've got to go. Like, you know, when you were a kid and you're, you're, parents or whoever's teaching you how to drive takes you to like the parking lot lot. Mm -hmm. so you can practice like Mm -hmm. i have to go to the grocery store parking lot to practice my parking you come on that neighborhood Mm -hmm. we got some nice little parking lot over there there you go practice you can come teach (laughs) i mean coach me slay yeah this guy could back in with a 18 wheeler i know he can do it all Mm mm-hmm you said that was the most nervous you've ever been in your oh, life was, when you were in I Florida. I was realized sweating bullets. <laughs> like just dripping I mean, off you. That, like, trying it came, to back it because they stopped traffic yeah. and everything. Everybody stopped blowing their horns and everything. I'm like, dog, come on, man. I'm new. Like, leave me did, alone. Did, was it a... No, I was in Atlanta the first, the first time. Did you get it the first time? Yes. Okay, but, good. Uh, I, but I think I... Like when I was backing it up, the, tra- the, the trailer tire locked up and started rubbing. It was... Oh, man. <laughs> and I was just like, forget it. Go, I'm gonna like drag it. it. I do. Yesterday. I promise you. And then you know, in Atlanta, they got them four line, four line, four lane roads on. Mm-hmm. So really, eight lanes. Yep. Dog, and I'm right there in the middle. In the middle of it, they blocking the traffic. Them people start honking. <laughs> I'm like, man, come on, man. I got these AC units. I'm trying to deliver. It's. I mean, just dripping. I off mean, you. dripping, dude. When I got out of the car, I was like, you all right? I'm like, no. And it's ironic you're <laughs> not. You're delivering a- AC, AC units. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. it. All right. Uh, we're getting your reaction. Uh, Tennessee and uh, and Purdue. Vols fall in the Elite Eight. The run is done. Um, we'll hear from Rick Barnes uh, at some point coming up. Uh, tonight, women's basketball, South Carolina, NC State are already in the Final Four. Who will join them? Three seed LSU against number one seed Iowa. Rematch from last year. Uh, I watched Kay- Caitlin Clark. Um, when was that? Saturday? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, dude, I know the scoring. That woman had 15 assists, too. I mean, just dimes. She can pass. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's going to be fun. That's like 615 on ESPN. And number three seed UConn, a three and a half point favorite against one seed USC. And if you haven't seen Juju, you need to see Juju. Eight o'clock ESPN. It's going to be fun. Uh, yep. Real quick note, Titans cornerback, Legereus Sneed, will address the media tomorrow at 11.30. Yay! So we'll hear from him. 615-737-1045. Micah is in Nolensville. Micah, what up? Hey, guys. So um, I got the chance to go to, like, my first two Vols games of this season um, to see Purdue and then also the Creighton game. Man, I mean, Tennessee probably should not have left it into the ref hands there, but there's not a ton. I mean, really, you can do, like, 20 to, like, 10 fouls, like, like, that dude, uh, Zach Eady played, played, like, the whole game. He's a 7'4 guy. He's in the paintball game, and he has one foul called on him. And then Tobey Awaka, he, he's guarding him. He's guarding him just like um, Edie's kind of guarding him, and he's getting called for almost every foul. So, uh, uh, it wasn't the most fair game, I would say, but, you know, you can't blame everything on the rest. Well, and, uh, it, it's, hey, that's a really good take, Micah, and I, I'm glad that you got to go. I'm glad that you got to go. Life's about memories. Was it so yeah, cool? It was, it was it was a tough it was tough loss, but uh, just really just I think Tennessee. They, I mean they they beat us, but I mean he was he was all over everybody, and the refs were kind of treating him as like Canadian Jesus out there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Mike. Thank close you. to Canada. Well, he uh, <laughs> he knew he was getting to that punchline. <laughs> yeah, <I like laughs> Canadian that. Jesus. I like that. Good job. Oh man. For those that don't know, Zach Eady is from Canada. Yeah. Yes. 
Oh, yeah. I guess that would yeah. make it make more sense if you didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, 40 points, 16 rebounds. He was 13 of 21 from the floor. Rest of the team, 11 of 32. What did he, seriously, did, what did he not play, 30 seconds or something? It, yeah. Something like that, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Yep. Yep. 615-737-1045. He is very frustrating. to watch. I told y'all, I've been watching him all year because it's, it's frustrating. Yeah, he, he, and on the heels of that, man, dude is a really, really good skilled player. He's yes, worked he his butt off to get to that point. But at the same time, man, I, the, a guy like that doesn't need help. That That is my only gripe about the game. I like the, I take everything else. I think both teams, Gee. as far as the others, didn't step up. Um, I don't look at it as not stepping up. I look at it as both teams having a force to be reckoned with, and you give Dalton Connect the ball, and you give Zach Eady the ball, and you get out of the way. It was as simple as that to me. Do you Boom, think that way. officials don't know how to officiate him? Yeah. I think it's hard, right? Because That's it, part yeah. of it. it. Like, when are you going to see When do you see that yeah. again? You know what I mean? I mean, because, so Mr. Babs is an IU grad, right? So mm-hmm. hates Purdue. Um, and he was like, this This is exactly what happened yeah. when we played him this yeah. year. You know? Yeah. And you think exactly. about it. Exactly. It's tough for the reason that, that it's tough to um, officiate a guy like DJ Burns, too. You're taught yep. as a post defender when he receives the ball, like Coach T said, you can keep your arm bar on him. The first bump, you can absorb the first bump. The second one, if you fall, is supposed to be a charge. How do you officiate that if it's just the guy's bigger? Like you don't necessarily want to call that foul every time. Like, and then you want you get into people flopping and things of that nature. I thought, man, that's why I think if, if you're going to stand your ground, you let a guy hold hold his weight. And it's, it's a simpler so division. DJ Burns loves to do that. He'll, yep. he'll pound you repeatedly and then yep. throw that little left hand. Wants to get y'all balance. Can he throw that hook on Edie? Yeah, because I the, the, the same. He if, extends. If Tobey Awaka is able to get a hook shot off on Edie, DJ Burns okay. can most definitely yep. get a hook shot off on. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. The uh, final four field is set. Got some notes on that. Also, more of your phone calls, um, and uh, we'll get to. The top five spenders in the NFL in the offseason. Titans on that list. 615-737-1045. What's happening, good people? One reason you should call Cove Generators is who? Generator Dave. The experts in generators, that's all they do. So when lights are going out, you heard a honk talk about the weather and how it's about to come through. Knock things out. It could be, could not. But you don't want to be the one guessing and hoping and ifing and wishing your lights can always stay on because say goodbye to power outages. Cove Generators takes care of all of that, Babsy. They also have portable generators. But listen Ooh. to this deal. One more reason you need to call Generator Dave at Cove Generators. A free new seven-year warranty with the purchase of a Generac home standby generator. This is now through May 12th. You're looking at almost an $800 value here. Only through May 12th. You mention us Dawn Slay 3HL 104.5 The Zone. You get an additional five hundred bucks off. So say goodbye to power outages. How about that? Visit CoveGenerators.com. Never lose power again. Contact them today nine three one five five nine three three one one. Don't forget mentions 3HL and they will take care of you. Or you can just go visit CoveGenerators.com. And stay connected through it all.
Three HL 1045 is home. Prince Doherty, Don Davenport, Ron Slay with you. Hope you're having a great Monday. UConn steamrolling through this tournament. Huskies have won their four tournament games by 39, 17, 30, and 25. That's an average margin of victory of 28 points per game. Yeah, this serious. UConn is an 11 and a half point favorite over Alabama on Saturday. Boring. <laughs> they are boring. <laughs> That's your take? Yes. Uh, That's my professional analysis. Mm -hmm. Auburn um, made their road real simple. Do um, Will UConn get out and put a hand in the face of those Alabama three-point shooters? Um, I think it's difficult to do that because everybody shoots the three. Everybody. Yeah, even the five. And Alabama wants the same pace that UConn plays with. Yep. So That should be a fun one. It it, it will be, especially if Alabama's hitting. Um, they're going to play the numbers regardless if they start 0 for 12. They're going to continue shooting it like they're 6 for 9. It don't matter. Um, they're they're going to let it fly because that is their game. They're built on it, and it works for them. How about Nate Oates? Man, hell of a story, man. High school coach, what, 10 years ago, 14 years ago? Mm-hmm. Yep. There's, Hurley was too. <clears throat> and he's all from – he's he's from that tree. Like, he doesn't get that opportunity of um, – um, what's the name doesn't take the job at Arizona State. Then Darren, yeah. Hurley, Darren Hurley move on, take the job at UConn. He get an opportunity at Buffalo, and then rest is history. How about that? Two Final Four coaches <laughs> were in the high school game less than mm-hmm. two decades ago. 615-737-1045 at 3HL1045. B-Jern 2, Auburn will always be Bama's little brother. Don't get so mad, Dawn. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Honk. <laughs> Yeah, twice. Impeccable timing. <laughs> Three times. <laughs> just, just wanted to get that third one in there. Just want to double check. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Jim and Fairview next up on Three HL. It's kind of a reaction Monday here. Jim, what's up? Hey, how y'all doing today? Hey, good man. Good man. Good. Uh, one thing, Don. If you got to check your size of your garage door width wise to make sure your truck will go in. Yes. Yeah, that truck is girth. They have to uh, bring the mirrors in to back it in. Yeah, definitely do that. You d- you have to learn where the mirror thing is. Oh, I already know. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. That's a <laughs> great point. Ron, got a question for you. <laughs> you in the game basketball, how can you keep the guys from jumping into you to get a foul? Yeah. Um, you, you, <laughs> uh, it's tough. I, I mean, I have no, I have no answer for that one. So, <laughs> yeah, a walk of fouled out in 14 minutes of action. Mayshack fouled out. JJJ finished with four. <laughs> so, mm. there's 14 right there. Purdue had 12. Yeah, that's, that's uh, tough. It, it, it happens in this game, but also the other games I watch as well. Is you got a guy coming into the to lane there, and you got a defender that's got that's standing straight up with his arms above his head, and the guy jumps into him, but yet he's called for a foul. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's, <laughs> that's that's weird. Slay's analysis. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I, 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 it's I, I have I, I have absolutely no answer for that, man. Like it's that's why it's it's funny when people say you've got to attack him or you got to do that. Is it's all in how the game is being officiated. You know what I'm saying? Outside of Edie, I thought it was officiated kind of the same. Like, the same fouls that I believe it was number two. I forgot the power forward name that had the dreadlocks for um, Purdue. But you see the fouls that he picked up so quickly? Like, he he didn't play any different than anyone else. The only one that didn't get the fouls called on him was Edie. Like, the power forward for Purdue, a walker, for, uh, and, and J.P. Estrella for Tennessee. It was the same exact calls, except for Edie. That was the only thing. I've, I've umpired baseball in Little League, and the one thing God we learned you. is that we don't make want to make calls that change the game. Boom. Mm-hmm. You let the players decide the game. You only call it according to the rules, but you call it the same for both teams. And I've had some good players that I've umpired against, but I call them just like I do the other players. Mm. If you can't call it equal, then quit umpiring. Right. I totally agree. All right, guys. Hey, appreciate thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, speaking of uh, – See, speak- I think, seriously, <laughs> they don't know how to officiate I, I, the guy. I, and that's – And so, I know he's been around, but he's a different player this year than he has true. been. No, And that's why, that's why I lean to the point of they don't want to call something to change the course of the game, like three seconds where you got to go change your entire strategy for a guy. 
Like it, they got to this point playing like they, this way. If, if they call two, three second calls on it's, him, it's totally then he's got to change how yep. he's playing. Yep. You don't he get actually the has there to get post. out of the lane at some point. Like because I thought initially Tennessee did a really good job on the catch. It was the repost, the the throwing it back in where you was like, golly, I'll, if he doesn't have to reset by getting out of the lane, then it, at there, I, listen, y'all, you are on guard, oboe. That size, that happens. Simple. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. I mentioned UConn. How about Alabama? They take out Clemson eighty nine eighty two to get their first Final Four ever. Tied hit 16 threes in the win. Bama point guard Mark Sears, if you haven't watched him play, so much fun to watch that kid. 7 of 14 mm. from three. Biggest story, the 11 seed, NC State Wolfpack. They beat Duke 76-64 to reach the Final Four. They've won nine straight games. If you haven't paid attention to this run, it's absolutely fascinating. Before the five wins in five days in the ACC tournament, NC State had lost four in a row coming into that tournament, and they were 4-10 and 10 mm-hmm. in their previous 14 games. They go. Was it the first game where they're, they're down by three, and I think it was West Virginia was shooting? No, it wasn't West Virginia. No. Who was it? Oh. Was shooting a free throw. If they make that free throw with like five seconds left, game's over, NC State season's done, coach is fired. But he misses the free throw. They go down and bank in a three at the buzzer to force overtime, end up winning. Mm-hmm. And here they sit. <coughs> Highest pre-tournament title odds to make it to the Final Four ever. Hmm. Okay? The biggest, uh, I guess, upset team, um, odds before the tournament to make the Final Four, 2018 Loyola, Loyola Chicago. Mm-hmm. They were 380 to 1. Yeah. So it's the gene. Remember that run. And they make the Final Four. 2011, Shaka Smart, VCU, 300 to 1. 2017, South Carolina, 280 to 1. 2016, Syracuse. I don't remember that team. 2000 what? 2016, Syracuse, 275 to 1. Was that that Jerry McNamara team? I think I think Jerry was. Uh, yeah, it's it nine been. years Might ago. Might have been. Yeah. yeah. It's nine years Might ago. Have been. Uh, and uh, number five on the list. The 2024 NC State Wolfpack, 200 to 1. They were 200 to 1 mm-hmm. to win it all coming into this tournament, and they are in the final four. Um, Kelly Harper fired at Tennessee. If you haven't heard that story, uh, that did happen. Um, one week after Tennessee lost to NC State in the second round, uh, her record 108 and 52, 53 and 24 in the league. She was 12, 12 and 37 against ranked opponents. Here's one problem there's a couple problems here. <coughs> I was going to say, I need to know if you agree with the decision or not, both of you. I might have given her one more year. Yeah. But I'm just kind of that way with people. I don't know. Um, You're too nice. There are a couple of, Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't need to be an AD, I guess. Um, There are a couple of problems. So one is development within the program from the base, which is high school recruiting, which I think personally, I know it's changing, but I think it's a little more important maybe in the women's game. Yeah. Um, it's harder to just go tr- all transfers, maybe. Um, I want to get your take on that. But she would only signed two high school players in the last three years. And the other thing is they beat one ranked team this year. Now, part of that was when they were playing the ranked teams at the beginning of the season, Rakia Jackson was hurt. Mm-hmm. They went four and four in that, in that thing. Uh, but only one win against a ranked opponent this year, only one win against a ranked opponent last year. So only two in the last two years. Those are two big problems. One question if South Carolina doesn't hit that buzzer beater, is she fired? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. So she gets a two point two million dollar buyout. Um, <coughs> That's fine. What do you think about it all? I need a two point. Oh, uh, exactly. Buyout. I don't think they're going <laughs> to do that for us. <laughs> I don't think they're going to do that. For I us. think, man. I I think <laughs> Kelly had um, big shoes to fill um, walking into this situation. And I think anybody would come in behind her as well to try to follow up what Coach Summit had done, has done. Um, coming from where she's come from, um, I believe it's Simo, um, she had a really good run now. You know what I mean? And I think she she excels at that mid-major level. Um, and I think a lot of it, when it comes to recruiting, she recruits in the mode of her um, because it worked um, and she knows it works. 
You just got to get a lot of people on board to play that style. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure at that level, at the Tennessee level, where the Lady Vols is, that you can have that style all, all five players, you know, with a splash of Rakia Jackson here or there. Like, you look at the teams that are dominating and the upper echelon teams, they four to five of those young ladies out there are dogs. You know what I'm saying? And that's no knock to um, the players that they, she already recruited, but all the players that are already there. But you got three or four Rakia Jacksons running around. And that's different than having the mode of um, one-dimensional player, like a spot-up shooter or a specialty-style player. You know, in these teams right here, you got people that come in and do that. Like, we need a three right here. All right, sub in whoever it is. You know what I mean? Sub in, go knock this three down for us. You got a guy, You got you got players that, that can do a little bit of everything. When you look at the LSUs, you look at the South Carolinas, the UConns, uh, USC, Juju is phenomenal, but she got teammates that can go too. Through that Pac-12 tournament, they were carrying her as well. You know what I mean? So that's that's part of it. You got to be able to get back to that and recruit that dynamic player. And you haven't been able to lock down the state either. I think that that hurts a little bit. You know what I mean? When it comes to it, because if you could, if you were able to go get Jelani Cambridge, I think that saves you. You know what I'm saying? But instead, she's going to Ohio State. So it's a lot yep, of different variables. Yeah. Um. Carol Lawson, that would be that would be my I I, 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 I take one. the check yeah I take the checkbook too and um and tell her write the number down let's get to work you know what I mean I just think it's gonna be difficult to try to leave that situation she's already rebuilt to come and rebuild another situation even though I think the resources are there it's different when you got a guy that you can go call in call on anytime and walk in his office and Coach K. You know what I mean? Well, that's, that's let me let me to walk away from. Let me run by. Let me run this by, because a lot of people say, well, like Bear, Bear Bryant, for example, like mm-hmm. he went to Alabama because he said Mama was calling. Right. You know what I mean? Like those Lady Vols, that's a different. Mm-hmm. That's a different thing, man. Yes. And so, if Mama was calling, could she say no? Although, it, the the former. Lady Vol hasn't worked out the last two times. No, nah, I thought one with Holly uh, was a that was hard. Quick, quick, good band aid, band aid for it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because and I think right now you are removed enough from Coach Summit. I think you could go away from the Lady Vol family for sure, but Carol Lawson might be the best choice. That's what, that, and she and that's just what happens yeah. to be a Lady Vol. Yeah, I, I agree. With I that. agree with that. Yeah. Would, would she leave Duke? I, 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 me personally, if it was me to come home, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Um, but man, Coach K is gonna make that all like she talked about it in her presser, like the influence that he has on her. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then you also gotta look at it like I believe Carol's been wanting to get into coaching. Like she sat on the Boston Celtics bench for a minute. You know what I mean? Uh but upon the Brad Stevens and things of that nature, like why didn't you go reach out then? So it could be a little bit of dang, why y'all y'all didn't why y'all didn't come get me before I started doing this? Y'all knew I could do this. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it might be I'm building my own thing. I'm building my own legacy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's one thing that Pat taught those ladies, too, to be able to go, to stand, go out and stand on your own, too. Not necessarily follow anybody else's legacy. Create your own. Yeah. What about Rick so, Ensel? Well, in which Don Staley has done right. at South Carolina Absolutely. now. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, all the Tennessee fans are yeah. right. Just write her a blank check. I'm like, yeah. Don Staley's not like She yeah. would not. <laughs> Never. Like, I, why I, would you? I, I love Coach Ensel, man. I, I think he's in the perfect spot. Is he too close to being done, too, maybe? Yes. Yeah, that too. I think, yeah. I mean, there was talk yeah. that he might be done yeah. last two, year yeah, or two, two, two years, years uh-huh. ago. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's in a perfect I spot. He created something. I think he has yeah. I got checked check in box. and what is done. Yep. Like, I, I'm not sure that Ensel would take that job. Yeah, I don't think he that, would. Yeah, why would you recreate that heat? The only reason Why I could see him. Why was he not coach him, of the year in the conference? Bad, bad, bad that, that is ridiculous. Bad the only reason I could see him taking it was to bring Matt Matt with him. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? Yep. I could see that. Absolutely. And then maybe turn it over to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely. Oh, that's interesting. I've got absolutely. an outside the box idea. Um, you do. <laughs> yeah. So what about? Um, and a lot of people won't know who she is, but uh, Jenny Busick is an assistant coach with the Indiana Pacers. Yep. She's from Nashville. I went to middle school. With, I went to JT Moore with her. She's bad A. She is incredible. Yeah. I didn't know she was from here. 
She's from Nashville. I huh. se- seventh grade, JT Moore, I played trumpet next to her. Oh, call her up. And then she went to, I don't know her anymore. <laughs> she went to university school to go play basketball. Yeah. I, I didn't, so. <laughs> <laughs> you did not. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you that, like Danny White said, you're not going to hear from me until we're done. Like, they're really tight-lived on that women's program. For <laughs> I don't know how they do it. We're tight-lived on all programs, though, since it came. We didn't know nothing about hype. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, they, they, yeah. They, well, it... I also feel like it was like a, uh, when Hypel was hired, it was not a no, popular, yeah. oh, yay. Mm-hmm. It was a, oh, you're just bringing your guy mm-hmm. from there, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh. So. 615-737-1045 at 3HL1045. Uh, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I, I mentioned uh, A to Z Sports threw this out there, but it came from Spot Track. The top five spenders in the NFL in the offseason, Titans are on this list. We'll tell you where next, 3HL1045 is on. Okay, guys, it is the last Preds home game of the season and Fan Appreciation Night, Saturday, April 13th. You've got about 12 days to see the Preds take on the Columbus Blue Jackets at 7 p.m. at Bridgestone Arena, big Saturday night in Smashville. The Preds continuing their hot streak in their march to the playoffs. You want tickets for the game on Fan Appreciation Night? Go to NashvillePredators.com slash tickets. The Preds push them for the playoffs. And the best way to score the most savings and access to Stanley Cup playoff tickets, by the way, is by becoming a season ticket member. Lock in your seats at NashvillePredators.com slash season tickets. Go Preds!
3 hl one zero four five. The zone. Brett Doherty, Don Davenport, Ron Slay with you. 83rd running of the year, Corey Steeplechases, May 11th. Make tailgating a breeze by joining 104.5 The Zone. Buck Rising and Friends inside the all-inclusive Champions Corner VIP tent. Oh, boy. To purchase tickets, visit 104.5thezone.com. Yeah, There's always some stories that come yep. out of that one. Who are these friends that Buck has in there? I think they are anonymous. There's a, there's a couple of them, though. I mean, you got to think about people that will surround, you know, put themselves in a position around him. <laughs> Yeah, like I that, mean, that's we a will life decision. On the install night, though. Oh yeah, you yeah. Know? I mean, listen, you got to go there. In all seriousness, we love Buck. We're just kidding, but no, yes, the install night is going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Steeplechase is fun. I've been one time. My bracket is done. Ah, uh, yeah. No, this, twice. I've been twice. This, yeah, I never been. I've only partied once. I was going, to and go. I didn't party like three years ago, two years ago. I have been once. It's always raining before. Oh, I know. Like, no. Yeah. You wear rain boots with your fancy hat. You can mm-hmm. wear your fancy hat, your thousand dollar hat. We've and got listen, a, a derby party coming up that I'm gonna. You do attend at the house. No, I'm not throwing it. I'm going to one. <laughs> my, ne- my. I mean, all that new my lighting girl case is uh, throwing it. You can bring uh, yeah. Buck and his friends. <laughs> There you go. Buck, buck they can wear their same outfits. Also, yeah. now now that you own a truck, you can uh, wear your thousand dollar boots. Yeah, that's true. I get can in be, and out of. I can be truck. like a true truck girl. Yeah, oh, yeah. You got a little, little cowboy. I hat. might have to. You know cowboy what? Hat. I'm gonna sport those for you guys tomorrow. I can't. How about that? that? No, not tomorrow. Oh, yeah, it'd be raining. No, yeah, you need rainy. to pick a tomorrow. sunny day. It's like when you wear your Jordans. Yeah. Oh. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. All right, so uh, big spenders in the off season. In the NFL. Who? Oh. A to Z Sports passed this along on Instagram from Spot Track. The biggest offseason spenders in the NFL. Top five. Ready? Yeah. Number five. The Houston Texans. Hmm. $235.55 million they spent in contracts. And they got better. Number the four. The Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, A I, lot of that was one guy. Yeah. $240.18 million. You believe in them? I never do, really. You believe in unfortunately. them? Unfortunately. No. I don't either. And I used to be a Falcon fan. Yeah. I like when they're good, but I don't believe in them. So I think I think they'll be get to the playoffs good, but like Kirk Cousins that. doesn't win big games. Mm-hmm. I think Kyle Phillips will Kyle Phillips. Yeah. We want him. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? We want him. <laughs> I just traded him to, him to the Falcons. Yeah, yeah. Come on. We want him to Hey, yeah. that's all right. What can we get? Season this year. <laughs> that one wide receiver away from that really happening. Mm. Yeah. Oh, man. I just put Kyle Phillips in Atlanta. You did. Sorry, bro. Uh, number, well, maybe not. Number three, uh, Eagles, $247.65 million. Again, biggest offseason spenders in the NFL. Number three, the Eagles. Wow. Number two on this list. I'm surprised they could find guys to take this amount of money. The Panthers, $255.58 <laughs> million. Yeah, they'll, get away. they'll get away. They'll give it away. Dead giveaway? They guarantee Number one, biggest offseason spender in the NFL, the Tennessee Titans at $306.4 million. Woo! Yes, Ran. <laughs> Ran, here is your credit card to yep. go buy your ingredients. Have a good time. Cook oh, it up. Yeah, that's a good mm-hmm. analogy. He's a chef. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's cooking. Mm-hmm. Chef Ran. Yep. $51 million more than the second <laughs> Place deep on this list. Listen, when you're as bad as you were, mm-hmm. it's, it's, you got to do something. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. A lot of Tennessee talk today. Big reaction uh, Monday. David is in Rockville. Next up on three HL. David, what's up? What's up? Yo, you still there? Oh yeah. You okay. hear me? Yeah, I got you. All right, brother. Hey, I wanted to ask Big Slay Dog why in the world Rick Barnes didn't go to a two three zone or a one three one on that big boy. You you know what I I we, me and Chris Lowe both said that um how many sitting there they, watching they might have played zone what three possessions this year that's the thing like Maybe. a lot of if uh, you don't teach it you, you can't just go that's it you know that's it yeah but there was no reason to take all them fouls they should have been ready for that zone and had him fronted and backed and made them shoot three because they didn't hit that many threes yeah, yeah but I, I, here's the thing coming into the game they were number four in America in three point shooting. Yeah, but at halftime, he should have switched it, man. I mean, come on. You got to give something a try. It wasn't working. Mm-hmm. 
mean, having said all that, with two minutes to go, they had shots at the lead. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I get what you're saying, David. I get it. All right, brother. Thank all you, man. man. Appreciate right. it. Well, Mayor and Babs, y'all have a good one. Listen to you every day, brother. Thank all right, you. thanks. Appreciate it. I guess because right. he already talked to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying guy. to figure out the reason why he only says something to two thirds of y'all. Yeah, because he already addressed Slay. Yeah, he was already chatting. Big Slay. Slay. He didn't want to hear anything from us. Yeah. <laughs> He's making up for what Reese and Laura do because they just talk to Slay. See, yeah. here's the problem with Reese. Okay, I have called you Big Slay for a long time, but now Reese says Big Slay. So when I say Big Slay, I feel like I got to do it like Reese does. <laughs> yeah, Big so Slay. Like, Big I get Slay. I get through this mental Olympics thing by just trying to say your name. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm gonna go to Savage, I guess. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Like you and Savage, call each other Savage. Kyle in Shelbyville. Kyle, what's up? What's going on, guys? Yo. Uh, I don't want to just talk to Slay. I'll talk to everybody about this. <laughs> <laughs> Good. DJ Burns, man. What's his draft stock looking like? I mean, if he keeps balling and gets a title, it's going to go up. But what kind of round are we talking about with him, that big boy? Same one I went in. I was undrafted. Undrafted? <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I got another question, too. This is my main one. Zakai Ziegler. I know football players, when I see one, that dude is a nickel corner all day. <laughs> I play basketball like a football player. Do you think, I mean, hey, like, I always laugh at that question, like, you know, basketball player playing football like Stanley assumed new or something like that. <laughs> but, like, when you bring up Zagai Ziegler, like, is there a receiver that could get away from him? <laughs> like, I, that, you might be onto something with that one. <laughs> Could you imagine trying to run around against that guy? You're not. Mm-mm. You're not at all. So, um, I'm looking why up DJ is he Burns, not, by the way. Yeah, Burns. Uh, not NBA material because he's too big, like out of shape. The the game is the game is transitioned from having a guy post up um, and run it through, like um, run it through them. The game is more spaced. Um, the three point line is introduced a an evolution that we left we left the the power forward in the center back in to sense. the basket yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's kind of over with it's more pick and roll like when guys used to come down they would run a play to get the ball into the post um and that would be a lot of your offense to play off of that now it's more so we're going down in open flow and transition and the big man is to come and screen and roll meet it at the rim create um, a condensed pocket so you can kick it out for other guys to hit three. So the game just not is is not there. You got to think, how many times do you even see a guy like Zion Williamson, who what I I would say is kind of like the same size. You know, what I mean, take the athleticism away, but plays the same same way as it's more explosive. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? But like um, DJ Burns, so is they don't even post him up like that. You know what I mean? They still go pick and pop or give it to him on the wing and let him back somebody down or something. But now you and you're not gonna wait. He's not that. He's not that major of a player to say, "Ah, right, y'all, we gonna change our whole offense." From now, Zach Eady is a is, that's a different different thing. If somebody wants to slow the game down to that point, but you even look at the guys like his size, they don't play on the block. The dominant centers, big Carl Anthony Towns, Joel Embiid, uh, Big Jokovic. Um, uh, the list goes on and on. They don't play like him. Uh, NBA draft.net, he's not on the two round mock draft. Mm. DJ Burns. Um, they have Cody Williams from Colorado going number one overall. Uh, a 6'9, 200 pound forward from France going number two. Dalton Connect going number three. 615 737 1045, always a number. Uh, when we come back, we'll check on Chris Lowe. He was in Detroit for Tennessee's loss to Purdue. He said he has things to say. Uh oh. He does. <laughs> we'll be right back. Chris Stories Lowe's next. To tell? He was a big sleigh. Could be. We'll be right back. <laughs> All 
Are you looking to add value and organization to your home? Then you need to go check out Artisan Custom Closets online at artisan, A-R-T-I-S-A-N, customclosets.com. Say goodbye to clutter, hello to calm in 2024 with Artisan Custom Closets. Uh, You can get organized with their state-of-the-art custom storage solutions available for your closet, your garage, your home office, uh, your laundry room, pantry, mudroom, you name it. Artisan Custom Closets can design it and do it. And here's the deal with Artisan. They're local, not a large chain business. Their products are all made and manufactured right here in the Southeast. Not cookie cut items, but items customized for your home. Bring some calm, get organized. They do a fabulous job. Uh, My garage is a product of Artisan Custom Closets. If you want something done from them to say goodbye to clutter, 615-800-2199. Again, that's 615-800-2199. Start with your free in-house design consultation, artisancustomclosets.com.
Good evening from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm Joe Hung. The Vols are heading a different direction when it comes to ladies basketball as Kelly Harper has officially been let go by the team as five years in her five-year history, 108 wins, and she did take the Lady Vols to the Sweet 16 twice. The Texans have re-signed VFL Derek Barnett as he started four games for them last year and had two and a half sacks with 11 quarterback hits. And if you just like horrific basketball, the Grizz and Pistons start tonight in about one hour on Bally Sports Pistons' worst record in the NBA as the Grizz have the seventh worst record in the NBA. For all your foundation repair waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols. The flagship station for you, Tennessee Titans, as well as home to 3HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. Three HL one zero four five. The zone. Brent Dorney. Don Davenport is here. I'm in the building. What about? She was doing some Olympic activities during the break. A couple Ooh. of breaks ago. Olympic activities. Yeah, she uh, was on top of the control. Oh uh, yeah. I'm gonna tell Dang. you why real quick. There is a cricket in this studio somewhere. I thought it was at the top of the window. So I was climbing on top of the. Ooh, I probably shouldn't say that out loud. Console. Mm-hmm. Our engineers are going to be like, why are you climbing on yes. our stuff? Oh, that didn't really, this is just a joke. It didn't happen. Yeah, it didn't really happen. But anyway, <laughs> never found the April cricket. April Fools. Yeah. April Fools. <laughs> is that still a thing? Do y'all get hit with April Fools? Uh, I hope I don't. Yeah, more than you know. It is still a really? thing, sadly. Yeah, please don't uh, hit me with it. It's annoying. By the way, now we think it's inside the console that's like holding all the stuff up. Which means it's going to be dead. <laughs> Why? By tomorrow, because it can't live in there. We'll mark it off then. Well, cross it off then. <laughs> cross off the cricket. Dead. <laughs> so I said, and you'll be you'll be hearing this phone call on a promo, uh, and I'm not going to go back into it. But I said he got himself in a pickle. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ron Slay is here. <laughs> thank, thank you, Hunt. I was going to let you go because I, I wasn't ready yet. I have nothing for you. <laughs> well, his, he's here, but his voice is ailing. No, it's still in oh, Michigan. I, I asked CeeLo, I was like, so, do you feel like Slay does? He goes, Slay used his voice a lot yesterday. <laughs> it did, man. I don't think I, I just told Paul Mason, our program director, when he um, came in, like, dog, I, I don't remember ever yelling that much at a game, even when I coached. Like I never yelled that much ever, even in the game when I'm doing all the talking. That's funny. Chris Lowe is with us now. Oh, uh, Cee-Lo. 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 Chris Lowe was with Perfect you in, in Detroit. CeeLo, uh, uh, I'm guessing Ron Slay was at kind of a scene yesterday. <laughs> hey guys, hold on one just a second. Just a second, okay? I'm getting. I want to make sure I'm getting final confirmation on this before I go on. Okay, I just got it. Zach Eady just left the lane for the first time <laughs> at 2.20 p.m. on Sunday. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything like that, man? I mean, you want to talk, like, slay jokes about the Boom Boom Room. I mean, <laughs> Zach Eady, I mean, took full advantage. Yes. Uh, no, there's the Boom Boom Room, and then there's the Paint Room. <laughs> Zach Eady has, has got the Paint Room. Yes, uh, yes, it is. Now, we uh, had a great, first time, a great time, Slay and I sat right there beside each other with the, with the great Tony White. And what a, what a high level. High level, high intensity, really good basketball. Mm-hmm. That's that's what you expect in an elite eight game. Um, listen, I, I've never been that guy, and I've tried always not to point to officiating and say, "Hey, this is the reason a team lost." <laughs> I have been that but guy. What I, but what <laughs> so I will, say, what I will say, what I will say is this: and, and being right there on the floor and seeing, first of all, how big that guy is and how dominant he is. I'm talking about Zach Eady. He's a terrific basketball player. When you allow a player of that size to just basically camp out in the lane, you've got to play almost perfect to win. And Tennessee played well. They didn't play perfect. But, no, he was in the lane the whole time. And here's – I think if you talk to Big Ten fans across the league, <laughs> this is the thing they've been talking about now for two years. Mm-hmm. Tennessee fans, unfortunately, saw firsthand that they just don't seem to call three seconds, not just against him – but anywhere in college basketball, but when it's him, as good as he is and as dominant as he is, 
uh, he's almost unguardable. Purdue um, into the Final Four for the first time since, what, 1980, I think. Um, and mm-hmm. their fan base turned out. Boy, you could hear them on the television copy. No doubt. Oh, they were there in force. I mean, the only thing louder than their fan base was Slay. Um, <laughs> and I was, was right one against it, everybody. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and let me say this. Slay was loud, but for the most part, it was – PG thirteen. He might have yeah. risen to R a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, now, listen, I want to be I want to be clear on this. It was it was a really good basketball game. Yes. Purdue's, gu- Purdue's guards are, are fantastic. They get the ball into the ED, they're patient, they don't turn the ball over. And and Slay and I were talking all through the game and and I know Barnes and the staff try to do different things and everybody says, Well, they should have doubled it more. If you double that guy, and they just carve you apart from the perimeter. Yep. And you know, you, you'd rather a guy get two than give up three. He made four. Is it 14 free throws? So 14 mm-hmm. of his points come up to free throw line. And that's the other reason he's so effective. A lot of big guys like that, you just foul them. You use all 15 fouls yep. and make them make free throws, and he makes his free throws. Uh, and the other thing is it's you played third. What, what do you play, 39 minutes yep. in the game? Mm-hmm. And he didn't get his first foul until, what, eight minutes to play mm-hmm. the game? So there's a lot of things there, but you know what? Tennessee still had chances. And again, Slay and I looked at each other there with five, six, seven minutes to play. Tennessee three times had the score tied and had good looks at the basket and could never pull ahead. Yep. And another time, I think they were down one and had another really good look. Great look. And missed a shot. Yep. And, you know, in those situations, you got to make shots, okay? And, and I'm not saying that, that you know, it, it wasn't just one person. I thought Connect probably had to do a little too much. And, and listen to some some family and friends and people as I got back today were were pretty hard on Zakai. First of all, Zakai Ziegler has the heart of the line, man. They, yes. There's no way they get to the final eight if it's not for Zakai Ziegler. He didn't play great. He didn't shoot the ball well. But guys, he was sitting right there in front of us. I, Rick tried to still hold a few minutes mm-hmm. to the rest. He was dog tired. That yeah. guy played every minute of the last three games, but one, I think. Yep. And when you have to fight, again, being so close to the court, and Slay, I'm sure you talked about this, when you're constantly having to fight over screens and fight mm-hmm. through screens the way he was, that is grueling. And I think he probably was a little bit tired down the stretch, and some of his short, some of his shots that he usually makes were off. But, no, I, uh, it was fun being there. It was fun to be in that environment to see Tennessee – for only the second time being a, an elite eight game and, and be right there with a chance to go to the, the final four against one of the best. I mean, I'd be, I'd be surprised if it's not UConn or Purdue right. in the championship game, but you never count out the big guy, DJ Burns. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was a great environment, great game. I love Tennessee. You don't look back and say, man, you know, we wouldn't have let him get back in the first half. There's a lot of things you can look back on, but when you look at the whole season, and the fact that they won the SEC regular season and the, the veterans being as selfless as they were, you know, guys like Santi and, and JJJ and some of those other guys, it was a, it was the kind of season, let's be honest, that we haven't seen very – only rarely when it yeah. comes to Tennessee hoops history. That was such a fun team. There's a picture out there going everywhere that um, – Shows uh, Santi and uh, and Josiah Jordan James walking on the floor like and embraced like arms wrapped around each other and you just think about man those five years with those guys um, and the finality of basketball man and and the, it's the beautiful thing about this tournament and it's what makes like one shining moment at the end of the whole thing where they show the emotion of of people winning and losing and all of those things and having to deal with those things in the moment um, real really special. Um, and I thought I thought what Josiah Jordan James had to say was, was really phenomenal. He said, man, this is painful in the moment, but I'm focusing on basically the beautiful, the beauty of the five years and this university and Coach Barnes and my teammates and all those things. Um, just uh, it, it was fun to watch this team, man. It was. Yeah, and I, and I want to be, again, I want to be very clear. I, I'm not saying that, that Purdue won – simply because of the whistle. I mean, sometimes you get good whistles, so you know, sometimes mm-hmm. you get bad whistles. Mm-hmm. You know, that guy is is hard. I would say it's a hard game to officiate anyway. Uh, I'd say he's probably even harder to officiate because he's so big. But there was some – that was a rough, tough physical game. And, and, and there were fouls called and fouls that weren't called, should have been called. Right. But, again, Tennessee had their chances. Even with all, you know, him getting 40 and 16 and, you know, him setting up a campfire in the lane. 
Tennessee still had chances to win the game and did not make shots when they needed to. And uh, Purdue made the play. I, I, uh, I knew going in that their point guard was good. I knew their two guard was good. Again, they how many turnovers did they have, Slay? How many yeah. turnovers did Purdue have in the game? They didn't <laughs> I, have many. They, no, they didn't. I, I think they might have got to 10 because they had a, like a little stretch when Tennessee yeah. went on their run. I think they had like four in a row. But right. other than that, no, nah, the ball was taken care of. Oh, and those guys are smart. They get the ball inside. Yep. And you know, one of the reasons he gets a lot of fouls is, is Purdue's game is centered around right. dumping the ball into him, which you'd be stupid if you didn't. So I, uh, I, I, the thing I will come back to is this. If three seconds is indeed a rule in college basketball, then call it or take it out of the game. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. I agree with that. CeeLo, outside of the game, man, out. Um, like that was my first experience being able to go to the tournament as a fan, follow Vol Nation on the journey. Um, I've been to a couple of tournament games, but to be able to be a part of the pregame and seeing all the hoopla and, and, and people coming together, the pep rally and tailgate and all of that, man, can you speak to that? Like I, I, I've never seen a uh, scene like that. And a lot of times because, you know, you see it at football, but that's going to kneeling and things of that nature, but on the road, man, I thought that was pretty phenomenal to see people travel and come out in droves like that. Yeah, and, and I was, I'm was i really grateful. I don't get the chance to do that much because of my schedule and covering college football and, and being alone and catching up with people, friends of mine, classmates I hadn't seen in years, yeah. and hanging out with Slay and, and Tony White and I drove there, and you know, Alan Houston and Trey Smith and mm-hmm. Josh Dodge and Jay Price. <laughs> You know, a lot of other guys were there uh, and, and, and people that, you know, listen, I mean, I can't tell you uh, guys how many people came up to me and said, hey, man, they love your show. Mm-hmm. They listen all the time. And um, from from everywhere, from, I guess, online, from Wheeling, West Virginia, to, to the Mid-State, to Knoxville, Cookville. Yeah. And, yeah, it was fun. And I think you see, for the first time in a long time, you see an alignment there at the university from Downey Plowman and the board on down, the kind of leadership that, quite frankly, Tennessee has lacked externally and internally mm-hmm. for a long time. And I think that uh, that was just, to me, sort of what stuck out, is is seeing all the people there and, and all the fans that came. And, and I think he, uh, let, let's, give, let's give Rick Barnes a lot of credit. Mm-hmm. He set the kind of tone with that program, both on the floor and the community, kind of kids he brings into the program, the way – he demands and challenges and pushes those guys. Doesn't make excuses for them, but you can you can tell in, in talking to all of them that are willing to be coached hard and willing to be challenged. How much he means to them. You saw what Dalton Connect said about him. I mean, yeah. Dalton Connect. Now he may have gone somewhere else and, and just showed out the way he did this year. But Barnes made him a better basketball player, and guess what? He made him a heck of a lot of money because mm-hmm. Dalton Connect's getting ready to get picked very high in the NBA draft. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. yeah, And they're going to have to bring in I don't know two, three more transfer portal, portal players uh, for next year. Real quick on the way out, uh, uh, Chris Lowe with us from ESPN.com. dot uh, com. Were you surprised that Tennessee fired Kelly Harper as women's basketball coach? You know, when I heard there, I heard there in Detroit that her buyout was going to go down. Um, I didn't know exactly when. I knew yeah. in a couple of days, so about a million dollars. Yeah. Right? Then I wasn't surprised because they just had not been able to beat top level teams consistently enough. The recruiting probably hadn't matched up to what it needs to be. Uh, so no. And and listen, Danny White is a guy that's you know he's going to do what he feels like is best for the program. It's hard to fire someone like Kelly Harper, who's meant as much as she has to the program and the university as a as a player and a coach and all that kind of thing, but it's Tennessee Lady Ball basketball, and you guys know, you guys know what the standard is there. And, yeah. Hey, and Pat, what she did, uh, it's you know following the person that follows the person and follows the person that follows the person. Whoever they bring in, there's not going to be any ambiguity about what's expected there, and that is to play for and win national championships. Mm-hmm. Chris Lowe with us at CeeLo ESPN on Twitter. Thank you, Chris. Good stuff, man. Appreciate you. Um, glad you got to uh, experience the sleigh ride up there in Detroit. <laughs> and, and let me let me add this. Sleigh made curfew every single night. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm Such sure. <laughs> he said this McDonald's was the first thing he'd eaten since before the game yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> 
All liquid consumption for me. <laughs> we're gonna next time you're on CeeLo, we're gonna get the uh, the behind the scenes stories. <laughs> it's gonna be good. He might hey, he might have some stories to tell on me too. So I gotta be careful. <laughs> <laughs> we need we need to uh, get a reunion from that team that went to New York. And oh just my gosh! Do something with that. Right. We had a conversation about that. <laughs> we did. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you, Chris. Appreciate you. All right, All right. All right guys. Yeah. See you. Chris Lowe, ESPN.com. Man, uh, Final Four. So an 11 seed, NC State. They got any chance against Purdue? Both these games, point spreads are huge. Like eight and a half. Purdue favored by eight and a half. UConn favored by 11 and a half. No. That's too much, isn't it? It's a lot of points, man. I mean, I understand that they're running through everyone. <sighs> but I think I think bookmakers are having a hard time with UConn right now. Yeah. they don't They don't know. Don't know what to do. Right. They've beaten everybody by an average of 29 points. And they turn it on. And they have had the easier road. Yep, without question. But they just look so dominant. They do. That's what they did last year, too. Yep. Yep. There goes that cricket again. There's that cricket. <laughs> cricket. Where are you, Jiminy? Do you think it's somebody messing with us? It's not really a cricket in here? It's Jiminy. Hunk, is it you? Did you put, like, some sound effect thing in here? Look, guys, the five minutes in between Blaine and Mickey and our show is already a dead sprint for me. I have no opportunity of doing this if there was an April Fool's Day joke. 615-737-1045. By the way, the Preds uh, have dropped two in a row. Oh, come on, Preds. Um, after they, Great, we suck again. After right. their incredible 18-game streak with at least a point, 16 of those 18 were wins. They host Boston tomorrow and St. Louis Thursday. So go make Bridgestone Arena loud. Yeah. Uh, and proud. They've got eight games left, four at home, four on the road. They are tied for sixth in the West. Um, so need to get that done. Um, we were talking about DJ Burns, man. Yeah. So 6'9", I, I noticed you, like, put him down at, like, 6'8". Yeah, he said it. Oh, he said it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He came out and said it. Mm-hmm. So 6'8", 3... Three, no, 335 at least. 335. Yeah. You can see it in his cheeks. 20 of it is in his cheeks. <laughs> like, I, listen, I know what it looked like. That's what I'm telling the people. Did you see him when he left the game against Duke and he went over there and a uh, guy tried to give him a fist bump and he hit him? Like, he fi- not fist bump, a uh, chest bump. Uh-huh. And he chest bumped the guy and he fell down into the chair. <laughs> Did he? See, yeah. That's a big man, dude. That's a big man. I think he's, he, he has a great opportunity, man. He's a household name now. So, like, do you that's remember great for him. why he left Tennessee? Yeah, he wanted opportunity. I mean, just the normal was, reason. Yeah, as simple as that. Like, it, you got to think coming into it, like, they were packed in the front court with, um, I think he was there for a second with Kyle, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I know for sure with Olivier Comois, yeah. Brandon Hudley Hadfield. Like, they were, it, like, it was the, time, the playing time was scarce. You know what I'm saying? And then he was in, in a situation where I think he had to lose some weight. So he got down, I want to say, to like 240. Um, and he wanted an opportunity, so I think he went to Winthrop, if I'm not mistaken. Went to Winthrop and played there, had a um, good time, and <laughs> went on went on to NC <laughs> State. Yeah, like it worked out perfectly for him, though. His smile, though, like when he's just smile ear, smiling ear to ear, it makes you smile. It was the same way at Tennessee, though. Like it's this, this was the guy at like he was always dressed in the um in the warm ups, but he would be engaging with the crowd, laughing and like joking. He was. He got infectious um, 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 smile and yep. attitude and energy. So I was talking to dope. Tracy Wolfson about him uh, today. She's going to come on Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Um, but that's the word I used. I said, it's just infectious. And she said, she said, that's that's exactly what it is. His quote to her, nobody cares about a loser. That's why I decided to be a winner. Mm. <laughs> Small man. <laughs> it's kind I of a it. clown quote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. Um, yeah. Unless the, he's on your team. Yeah. One yeah. of the new Titans is meeting with the media tomorrow. We'll talk uh, talk about that and tell you who it is next. Here you tell 104.5 this one. Mortgage professionals in Benton, Tennessee. Hi, I'm Chuck McDowell, owner of Wesley Mortgage. I'm a true local. Born in Mount Juliet, met my wife at MTSU, and I live in Franklin. While every other mortgage company is cutting back, we're rapidly expanding and investing. Are you sick of feeling like an operations employee to ensure your loans are closed on time? When you look around your office, it doesn't look the same. You're missing people. You're missing your friends. Is anyone having fun? 
We're having fun every day. As the official mortgage provider of the Tennessee Titans, I've personally recruited the top local operations team to ensure your loans are closed on time. So you get paid. So you get to spend time building your business and you get to have fun at work again. Now is the time to join our team to start a confidential conversation with our local president and COO, visit whywesley.com, whywesley.com. And almost instantly with Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, no hassle. Go ahead and get the process started at LoanPronto.com. That's what I did. It was easy. Call now, 615-499-5780. LoanPronto.com at 615-499-5780. Loan Pronto, NMLS, 1661781. Subject to lender approval, equal housing lender.
Three to one zero four five. The zone. Brett Dorty, Don Davenport, and Ron Slay. Final four set for Saturday, five oh nine p.m. NC State and Purdue. Eleven seed against the one. Purdue by eight and a half. And Saturday at seven forty nine p.m. Congrats, Alabama people. Mm-hmm. First final four ever. <laughs> oh, dude. Mark Sears, man. Some res- respect on that. Yeah, you don't have to live with one. <laughs> <laughs> His wife is. What's up, Tori? <laughs> Four seed Alabama, one seed UConn. UConn favored by 11 and a half. A lot of points. Man. Dude, Alabama just could not miss, man. Yeah, that's how they get. Anytime Clemson got close, like they would hit a three to cut it to three, and then Mark Sears go right back down yeah. and hit like a 30 footer. Yeah. That guy step up, man. That's, that's, that's a style to play. Women's basketball coming up tonight. South Carolina and NC State already in the Final Four. Uh, you'll get the other two tonight. Three seed LSU, one seed Iowa. Rematch from last year. Um, Iowa favored by one and a half. If you haven't seen Caitlin Clark, get it done. 6.15 p.m. I will say this, too. Uh, three seed UConn, one seed USC. If you haven't seen Juju, need to see mm-hmm. Juju. Um, eight o'clock on ESPN. So two really good games and uh, phenomenal um, attention for the women's game, for yeah. sure. And so that'll be fun. Titans cornerback, Legereus Sneed, will address the media tomorrow at 11.30 a.m., we will carry it live on the Buck Rising and Friends show. I love fun, it. Fun. fun time. I saw Lucas today on the YouTube feed. Did you? Yeah, he looked like uh what did he look like? It looked like he was going to a tennis match or something. Like he was wearing, it looked like he was wearing like a white polo, but also like a blue jacket, like sport coat. What was he doing? Pam, what were you going, Pam? I, or uh, I maybe think he's he was got a, some Nashville SC stuff afterwards. Uh, oh, uh, or maybe a yacht captain. Maybe it was that. Oh. Or what else could he do? Got his uh, boat shoes on with him. Also, Buck needs to gain some weight. He don't like skinny Buck. <laughs> <laughs> he is skinny, man. Mm-hmm. Skinny, skinny, skinny. Uh, so, Legereus need yeah. tomorrow. So, I mean, they definitely got better at corner. Yes, they did. No question about that. Better a lot of spots, man. I, I'm, I'm so intrigued to see. After all of these moves, I want to see what happens with the inside linebacker spot. That's what I'm – I guess you go in the draft to get one, and I, they just popped it up on the screen a little while with was in 3 o'clock sometime. Um, By the pay, way, if you're wondering about Slay, he was in New, in New York. He was in uh, Detroit. I, was, I, I probably weekend. was there too. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, my, That is he, why he sounds the way he sounds. Yes, he used his voice quite a bit yesterday. My voice is gone. I have no voice. All right, so anyway, go ahead. But, Sorry. Um, just, if people just tuned in. <coughs> the top interior linebackers in the 24 draft, Peyton Wilson from USC, Edron Cooper from a and we talked I about. I love him. Yeah. yeah, Cedric Gray from North Carolina. Did you cover him, Babsy? We did. Yeah. Or I did, yes, but it was early in his career. So. Okay. Trevin Wallace from Kentucky. Um, Junior Colson from Michigan. Another guy we talked about in Jeremiah Trotter Jr. from Clemson. So those some that, – that's – there's some dogs right there. All, also, all six now. Also, who's going to play safety next to Elijah Hooker? You think? I mean, I said Elijah Amani Hooker. Yeah, my bad. Next to Hooker. Yeah, Elijah Molden. No, I no I I well, listen. I honestly don't think uh, Molden did a great, bad job last year. I thought they were forming chemistry to be thrust into that role um, mid season before. Yeah, yeah. And then you got to imagine when it happened. Like he didn't he didn't get to prepare for that. That just happened. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it was a it was a need right there and he filled that void. So I like what happens with a um a full off season to prepare for that under a guy like Denard Wilson, like I said his name right then. Mm-hmm, yep. Yeah, Denard Wilson. Um I, I, I mean, in a sense, you gotta be a corner, don't you? To to play that spot a little bit as the league goes now. Outside of just the safety. Yeah, I think going to get – he told us to call him uh, Cheeto. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Going to get Cheeto and Legereus need enables Roger McCurry to be inside, which yep. is where he needs to be, and you've gotten better at all three positions. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Right, and then so at safety, Amani Hooker, you know what you have in him. Um, Elijah Molden. I mean, I, I'm like saying to see some competition get, there. Yeah, and I, you know and, what I mean? yeah. I, I ain't saying we should. That's we should pencil them in, like with ink. 
Um, not how you gonna pencil in? You should write it in with ink, with an ink pen. But I'm saying for now, when you catch <laughs> like if you were to use a pencil, I think that would be wise because <laughs> you can erase. But I think he should have a shot at it. But I'm with you. I, I, if you can upgrade at that position like you did everywhere else, why not? But if I'm with you, you there. Money? So, so that safety spot and inside linebacker next to Kenneth Murray, right? Well, I think it'll be a good addition. Get somebody else with him. You, like you need a you need a cornerstone right there too. Come on, cricket. Jim, it is just. Do you think? Here. Can you can our listeners hear the cricket? I, I don't know, us? but it sounds fake to me. That's what I'm like. Plus, let us get our hands on you, little cricket. It would choke you, cricket. You're gonna be gone. I'm gonna choke that cricket. I'll I take him to the lake. There's a no. go fishing. We would free him from. The no, studio. we no. He's bait. <laughs> Listen up. Usually she's the hard line person. Not with animals, though. Not with animals. Yeah, she's different with animals. Is a cricket an animal? It's an insect, Babs. (laughs) It's an animal. He breathes and eats. You are? I mean, I don't even, like, stink bugs, when they get in your house, (laughs) I pick them up and put them outside. Let them live their life. I only do ladybugs like that. I ain't doing no cricket. Like, cricket, you getting smashed. No. (laughs) Man, that man gonna be hopping on you and everything, Babs. He always hopping. Always hopping. So he settle now. We think he is within the middle console that that carries all of the wires that that go to our microphones, uh, Zone TV, all of the stuff, computers, yep. all of the stuff. So there's a door that was open for a while because yep. Slay kept it kept landing on you, <laughs> yeah. and it weighs like twenty pounds. Do you think that Babs should go in there and go get that cricket? Uh, I'm not going no. in there. Are you scared? Yeah. Oh come on, Babs. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm not That's why you got to die. Uh-huh. There's nothing to be scared of. It's not going to send you to Narnia. He be hopping though. You don't know what is in there. And what kind of hops he got. And what kind of wires are in there. Yeah, hey, he might good. turn the mic on. I'm about to touch any of that. Yeah. I'm out. What the cricket turn the mic on? Babs go in there and get that cricket. She'll like cross the wires and then suddenly <laughs> the zone will be on 103.3. <laughs> I'm telling you. Murph dog, what you doing in there? Something crazy going on. <laughs> that would not go over well <laughs> with their listeners. 92 <laughs> you. <laughs> we got five radio stations in this building. Yep. Slay and I, for a while, were threatening to go into 92Q studio and lock the door. I Somebody said, that. I just heard it. <laughs> oh, heard the cricket? Yep. Okay, see. Johnny Nashville. All right, so would y'all smash the cricket or not smash the cricket? No. Where are we? What? With? Cricket there, chips. There's no cricket smashing in the meantime. On show. In between time. Peace. Although they heard it too. Yep. They did? Yep. Wayne in Nashville. Wayne, what up? How y'all doing? What up, man? Good one, man. Hey, uh, man, don't smash a cricket, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> you do no wrong to you. This is so three and when somebody calls in and says, don't Lazy smash the cricket, bro. <laughs> uh, so first of all, man, I heard your, dude, I could hear your voice, your vault chant through the television, bro. Could you not? Wow. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I was loud. Mm-hmm. I couldn't because I was loud. I, I love it. We were <laughs> Purdue fans were, you know, outnumbering us. Yes. Hundreds of one. Yeah. Um, drink some hot tea with some honey in it. You'll okay. be good. Gotcha. Um, two things, guys. I'm sorry to waste all time. So I want to know real quick if what y'all's thoughts on this Coach Barnes was contracted up in 27, 28, right? Mm-hmm. 28, um, yeah. mm-hmm. and, and the great recruits we have coming in, do you think we got a shot at running it back? Um and also Vescovy, right? With mm. he's been, you know, he had the flu. He was sick. I mean, you could look at him. Yeah, he was coughing he was on the floor. The flu. Mm-hmm. I want, yeah. I mean, I wonder. Obviously, it that had a difference, but I wonder if he was healthier. Um, uh, that could have made any sort of difference. I thank you so much. Have a good one. Yeah, what, it wasn't hurt. Was yeah, he, I, he was struggling. It, oh, I mean, you could see it. It's different in person. Yeah, right? you could literally yeah. see. It. it was like, oh, come on, man, don't even try. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think his shooting would have helped. Um, that's one guy you cannot leave open, so spacing the floor would have been good. A lot of times down that stretch, when the ball was being um, penetrated by Tennessee, they were helping off of Jemai Meshack. So that's one thing he got to continue to work on to coming back because his man was sitting all the way in the lane. And they, they were not guard- worried about him Yeah, they were guarding him with Smith a lot of the times, which allowed him to rest as a point guard. Well, when you look at Zakai, who had to play on both ends of the floor, chasing and grabbing and doing everything, so... Yeah. But um, I, I do think uh, they can run it back, though. I was just going to say, looking towards the future, because before this, you know, both of you guys had said 
depending on mm. what this team did, that possibly, you know, Rick Barnes could sail off into mm. retirement. Mm. You guys don't, this this nope. wasn't the finish to nope. where he's okay with doing that. Yep. And with what believe. he has coming back and then the potential yeah. of of what's coming in. Yeah. I think they, I think they, they have good. a good chance to yeah. roll. You bring two all SEC guys back in Zakai yeah. and they do and um, Cameron Carr coming off the bench, Freddie DeLeon getting minutes. Real quick, Jordan let me Gainey stop you also. at Cameron Carr. For for those that don't know, that's the guy you said outside of Connect probably has the best pro potential. Yeah, no and question. He, and he barely played. Yep. So he, and he'd be a good May Estrella, be back. like JP Estrella is a he guy that's going to really be for, good. He's going to be looking for some minutes. Yeah. And imagine how much better Tobe will be next year. Right. Like you were able to give him the ball in these two games, Sweet 16 and Elite Eight. And go get a bucket that, against that, bigger that's guys. That's help him in yeah. terms of confidence. Mentally, too. oh, yeah. He, so that'll be another inside presence. Like, I think Here's they, the other question. Spot. Who do you grab at the portal? Do they all stay? That, let's, let's talk about it when we come back. Also, um, they do have one player that has signed a letter of intent, uh, and it's top 100 player. I'll tell you about it. Uh, also, when we come back, 615-737-1045. Go up to Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. That's where you need to go to get that next new vehicle uh, for you and your family or you and your cricket or whatever uh, you've got going on. Uh, car, truck, SUV, Jeep, whatever you need, new or pre-owned, they will be able to help you out. 3450 Tom Austin Highway in beautiful Springfield, Tennessee, just 30 minutes from downtown Nashville. Uh, best vehicle buying experience you'll ever have. That's at Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Daniel Gupton and his crew uh, ready to help you out. No pressure at all from them at all because they want you in the vehicle that's right for you, and that's what will happen when you go see them. Take your test drive, go inside. They will help make the numbers work, and it will be that easy. Check them out online, guptonmotors.com. That is uh, the website. All the dealership information is there. All of the inventory is there as well. That's guptonmotors.com. 24 West or Clarksville exit 35 is about nine miles outside the city. Straight shot into the best vehicle buying experience you've ever had. That's Upton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 3450 Tom Austin Highway 30 minutes from downtown Nashville again check them out online guptonmotors.com what up people Kellum Stem Cell Institute.com is who you should reach out to get your consultation set up today at 615-850-4415 and when it comes to Kellum Stem Cell Institute.com and understanding exactly what they do well it's your body working for you and it's your cells that you're um that's the most important part because it's your solution now you ask Am I going in to be the guinea pig for this? No, uh, uh-uh, not at all. This works because I did it. I'm your guinea pig, people. I already went in and got it done, and so did other people as well. And they have their own testimonies. You could have yours. Mine was, you know, playing after all these years, knee problems with inflammation. I mean, flaring up just to walk around. I would, you know, if I knew I was going to be active and walking for a long day, I would pop to a leaf just to make sure that the inflammation doesn't flare up. Not having to do that anymore. Plane rides, none of that is a problem. Sleeping on my right side with my shoulder, none of that is a problem anymore. You go in and talk to Dr. Kellum during your consultation and get any questions answered. All you got to do is hit him up, 615-850-4415, KellumStemCellInstitute.com. Below MSRP, below MSRP, below MSRP. It's pretty simple. Two River Ford sells all new non-specialty Fords below MSRP. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all-cash offer, you close in as little as 21 days, no home inspections, no lock boxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing.
Three HL one zero four five. The zone during the break. I just went with like a movie quote. I, I work. I work song lyrics and movie quotes into my like vocab. Uh, not vocabulary. Uh, nomenclature. Conversation. Yeah. Nomenclature. Well, you and your words. And <laughs> I used a line from the movie Clue, and Babs got it. I could not believe it. I could not believe it. That is a great movie. And Slay's like, what are y'all talking about? Because yeah, Babs doesn't even watch movies, and no one gets my references from that movie. Dude, that's a great movie. It is incredible. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. 1985. Yeah. Slay <laughs> looked it up. He's like, man, I might check that's it out. That's the movie I can pull from. Anything Major League <laughs> and 1985 Clue. Well, I'm going to check my, it out for y'all. My granddad took me to see it when I was a kid. So would y'all give it one to ten? T- Fifteen. Yeah. I- yeah, it's good. All right, y'all. It's so smart. Y'all setting the bar so high. And then there's like four different endings. I have no problem setting the bar high on this mm-hmm. movie. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to dig into it. I can't it's wait like, till you dig into okay. it. You're going to be like, y'all are weird. Gotcha. Clue. So they have the ending, and then it's like, or it could have happened this way. And then they, <laughs> and they, and then show they do it. that yeah. ending. Or maybe it happened this way. Yeah. But this is what really happened. So it never really ends. Yeah, it does. Oh. It's good. Eventually. We probably shouldn't have told you that part no, of it. No, because but... that kind of ruined. <laughs> oh, so now I don't need to watch No, it. you're good. You, sh- you, <laughs> just watch you can it. still watch it. It's still <laughs> worth a watch. Okay. All right. Uh, Tennessee's got one player signed. Bishop Boswell uh, from Myers Park, Charlotte, North Carolina. Combo guard, 6'4", 195. Four-star player rated the number 83 player in the country. Number 10 combo guard in America. He is signed. I have to do some homework on him. Yeah. And then portal. You got to pay attention to the portal. Definitely. I hate looking in the portal. <laughs> portal is just a bunch of stuff going. On. It's like looking through one of those um what's the little the little the little scope with the little multi colors and Oh, kaleidoscope. Yeah, man. I ain't it's like that's what the portal is. It just confuses you. It's our portal sound for whenever you guys answer. Yeah. I've had it up here for a year and I just now started using that's it. That's right. Like this very second. That's yeah. when someone goes in the portal? Yes. So what does it sound like when they come out the board? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? That was the sound right beside it. I just went with something there, too. Uh, <laughs> Auburn's, uh, what's his name? Katie Johnson is in the portal. Yeah. I know, that is. I thought I'd get a reaction. I said that last week, so and I thought weird. I'd get a reaction out of you on that one. No, so I, weird. I said it. You, you said, well, what else did, can he do at Auburn? <laughs> Darn. <laughs> Him and his short shorts. Well, we'll, well, I mean, I, I think we're at the point where you can't be surprised if anyone goes in there. I know. Listen, That's I'm why scared. I was asking about Tennessee. Do they all stay? Yeah, you did ask that, yeah. No, I, the reality of the situation is no. Yeah, I, right? I think it'll be it'll be tough to keep all of them. Um, Mayshack, Freddie DeLeon, all could be vying for a time somewhere. Um, but, I, man, I'm just, I, I just, I never really understand it. Not when you've already created a leg. Like Katie Johnson, you were there for four years. Like, why? Yeah. What are you? Where? Where are you going? Like, why? I I never understand. Why don't you cement your legacy? I I just I never understand. Never understand. Thero, he's fourteenth on the list, going from, from Kentucky? Kentucky to where? I don't know. Yeah, combo guard. Yeah, he, 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 he's a good. He's gonna be. He's gonna be a good help for somebody. Cade Tyson from Belmont. Is rated the number nineteen player in the portal, small forward. But in case they're losing everybody, ain't I think that's three, right? Yeah. Mm. Man, yeah, Malik is another one. New mm-hmm. It's a world. different world, man. Like, uh, I do not. I, boy, I could not do it. I do not envy these coaches. No, not at all. Yeah, because yeah. it's hard. How do you build your roster not knowing? Like, I remember talking to Helton at Western Kentucky. Now, obviously, this is football. It's different, and, and your roster is built different because of your numbers alone. Mm. Like, I think it's harder in basketball, right? But Or maybe it's not as hard because it's less right. starters. I don't know. But Helton was like, yeah, I at Western, I sit down with my players like three to four weeks prior to the season ending. I, I sit down with all of them. Hey, just tell me what you're thinking here. What what you're feeling, if you're considering it. You know, uh, he's like, you yeah. have to, because you, you have to be able to plan guy. in if advance. So those conversations for him happen before the season is even over. And he was like, players over. are going to change their mind and whatever See. else. And he said, but then at least I have an idea. An idea. 
of what I'm going to lose and what I I'm going to keep. I hate the fact you just got to pacify all these guys. It's sad. Yeah, right? I couldn't coach like that. So Tyron Lawrence is rated the 54th player in the portal. Huh. Out of Vanderbilt. I don't see your boy in here. Rivera, uh, Rivera uh, Torres. Torres. Yeah. I don't see him. Probably a lot of people knocking on his door, though. But is he in the portal? He's in the portal. He's, he's in the portal. portal. He definitely he's in the just, portal. He's not on the top 50 list? Oh, I'm at 95. Oh. Oh, no. He's not oh there the he top is. 95. Oh. oh. There you go. Bingo. There you go. Yeah, help someone. And practice. Uh, What's up next, huh? Oh. Uh, that would be the 3 HL after <laughs> just party. over there. <laughs> <laughs> We get to hear Slay's amazing low tone voice. <laughs> yeah, man, this is the after hours. Barry White. After hours show. <laughs> Barry My Manila. darling. Uh, Barry somebody. Can't get enough of your love, babe. All right, later, y'all. Good night. God bless. See ya. <laughs> Wouldn't want to be you. Oh, be you.